Shack at the bottles getting nippy up the crack and we stacking chips all of it's what I want plus money winners that's what I'm on you can say I'm gone I prefer elevated pub sports radio time to get educated get produced feed the juice letting loose with so much abuse that the bookies want to call a truth they get slaughtered can't forget Jeff and low baggers in the chat that's a lethal weapon to be pubbing pubbing What up, cappers, gamblers, punters, hustlers, low baggers? Happy Friday, March 8th to all of you. Thank you for watching Ben with the Bag right here on Pub Sports Radio. I kept the streak of winning days to start the month intact. Uh, unit wise, I break even uh, down at 0.25 units in, in NCAA, uh, up 0.25 units in NHL, but I bet more. In NHL than I do in NCAA basketball. So it, everything worked out. I, I stayed off the NBA card, and that was a mistake. Uh, I was against a lot of the looks that were here, and, and I didn't have the conviction. I didn't have the conviction, you know, to back the Mavericks. I, I, I didn't have the conviction to back the Timberwolves. Uh, I've thankfully stayed off the Warriors. I hum and hawed on that one. It was... Uh, it was a tricky card. I wanted to fade the Raptors, uh, and they came back and covered. So it was, it was okay. Uh, there's a lot of spots on today's card that uh, in NBA that I want to attack, and I'm very hopeful. Uh, March eighth, so we've had seven straight winning days in March, and let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. Happy Friday to all of you guys. We have a great show. So we have four games in NHL, 26 in college basketball, and eight in NBA. Every one of those will be capped right here on the show. We have Bobano joining us for NHL and NCAA basketball. For the 26 games in NCAA basketball, we will have the three-minute clock up on our screen so we can keep a brisk pace. Uh, and then Billy Brisbane. Billy Brisbane got off to a real tough start record-wise here on the show. Uh, but he's hit five straight over two shows. Five straight winners from Brizzy over two shows. Uh, I'm excited for him to keep that streak going. And I'm excited to work with all of you guys. Uh, so we have uh, Joe T in the house. Uh, Joe T, best bet, Citadel Mercer over 139. He's on the Wild Avalanche first period over and over six and a half. And the Heat Thunder over 224. That's from our guy, Joe T. Let's copy and paste his action uh, as well. It was a wild, uh, as always, a wild day of sports yesterday. And, and I was kind of low quantity. Uh, you know, I, I ended up with just 10 bets, which, you know, it's kind of a soft night for me. Kind of a soft night for me. Uh, five and five over those, but hit some uh, big winners and uh, very, very helpful. Uh, the, the devil's first period, the spite bet was the most helpful uh, of all, of everything. But orange juice octopus in the house getting us started. So let's have a winning day. Make that money. Truly appreciate all the hard work you guys do. Great job. This is by far my favorite betting YouTube podcast out there from our guy, orange juice octopus, the pig milk play of the day. Now 10 and one. Plus 8.92 units. And it's funny, uh, you know, some plays of the day, they stick with you at pig milk. Play of the day is just uh, something I think about. I think about it. Stacks play of the day from Justin McKelvey. Cavaliers minus one. I mean, how could you not like that spot? You know, I agree. I, I was surprised that the market moved a point in the wrong direction with all the money on the Cavaliers. That's why I haven't bet it yet. And the pig milk play today is the Citadel Mercer over. Look at that. So we have the corner of Joe T and pig milk Boulevard. Look at that. Pig milk Boulevard is in 10 and one plus 8.92 units. That's how you get people's attention. And my guy, Billy Friedrich, is a great capper. Smooth balls play of the day. Dayton under 137 and a half. 
or smooth balls. I'm going to have to move these spots over to college basketball and put them right, but I will do that in due time. We must keep a brisk pace today. There's our guy, Razor Sharp Picks, who's absolutely destroying right now. Uh, sick, sick, hot, dumb hot. Keep it up, Razor. Love to see it. Uh, Joey Harb in the house. There is old E ready to get to work. Talk sports with JT in the house. Uh, Gerald Jones rocking. Oh, winning night. Best bet. Uh, that Western Illinois, Arkansas, Little Rock under 135. I love it. Let's grab that uh, best bet from you. Uh, and uh, JT on Radford. That's a really fun game to break down. It's fun. You know, I love the Wednesdays and Thursdays best bets, uh, you know, with C-Mac, Mikey Money, Dabby Cab on Wednesday, and then Dave Rogers, Mikey Money, and Dabby Cab on Thursday. I love it. But Tuesdays and Fridays, from a, from a for me, the fact that we can touch on each and every one of the games is, is very appealing, uh, very appealing. And I'm very excited about the opportunity to do that this morning. Uh, afternoon with you guys four hour show yesterday uh orlando money line for viper and the uh, magic playing very good basketball right now there's our guy dan kelly in the house dan my man it is great to see you brian watson ready to get to work there is mally mal ready to go so another thing is there's afternoon basketball games we will get to them only four games on the nhl card so please have no concern about that whatsoever we're going to get to all of that a uh, tory coker ready to go leonard porsche jr slatsy is on avalanche money line avs team total over three and a half at plus 101 uh, you know that seems to make a lot of sense i watched mccarr's hat trick and i watched them put up seven they've been so dominant over the last two games that i just you know how big of a difference is the Minnesota Wild to the Blackhawks and the Detroit Red Wings without Dylan Larkin? I think quite a bit. And, you know, like the undoing project, I'm not going to believe what I saw with the Avalanche after that dominant, and I'm going to stay off of that spot uh, as much as I find it interesting. And I can understand why anyone – but I, I did watch it, and that's why that book is so important. I watched the Avalanche. I watched Makar's first ever hat trick. Uh, Bo Jackson, Andrew G, Sean Pulliam. There's Rocco Rogers in the house. JT Eel ready to get to work. A Friday show on his birthday. Happy birthday to JT Eel. I've got to get a birthday pick for my guy, JT Eel. Happy birthday, JT, man. Respect and love. I hope it's a sun. I hope the sun is shining for you wherever you are, my friend. Rocco Rogers says, uh, waiting on lineups to be confirmed because of trades. Yes, the trade deadline, 3 p.m. Eastern. We saw Billy Friedrich have his, uh, I wouldn't say prayers answered, but uh, his his needs, his wants answered with Gensel going to the Hurricanes. Uh, Slatsy, thank you about the uh, Devils. It was uh, extremely helpful for the evening. Uh, Brian Watson said Carolina picked up Kuznetsov. You know, it's probably the perfect team for him. And uh, Stimmy OG says Spurs airway big. That was an awesome call, Stimmy. An awesome, awesome call. Mally Mal, Mac Complex, BT, Dan Bonner, Nut Flush Allen, Big Scott ready to go. Let's copy and paste Big Scott's action. Coin ready to get to work. The squad is coming together. And let's get that cash. Something we've been doing very well this month, but we must keep it going. Uh, Dan Kelly saying Mitchell is out for Cleveland. Yes, another game without him. Uh, there is a smoking tree. It was fun to watch you and Justin uh, McKelvey go back and forth. Uh, like good cappers, man. That's how it is. Uh, respect. Uh, so uh, Toledo minus eight and Ohio minus two for Kelly McKinnis. I was thinking of you, Coin, uh, with Austin P. I I was thinking about your future bet. Uh, I was thinking about it and. Let's get it, man. We want to get it for you. We want to get you that cash. Let's copy and paste all of the action. There's Chang Kim in the house. Chang, I'm uh, God, watching the under in that magic go down in flames because, you know, I gave you the avalanche. They went 7-2. Watching that under go down in flames late uh, hurt me, man. I just I don't feel like we're delivering enough for you. Uh, here is Guillermo Zertucci. Got a horse for you at Santa Anita. Uh, that uh, sounds like the musical. Uh, <laughs> what is what is it? Uh, God, I don't want to start singing that musical. Uh, uh, Mario Gutierrez, my boy, is riding Doug race seven. Uh, number seven, don't swear, Dave, at four to one. We do have it. Let's copy and paste that. Respect, I love it. Thank you, G. I will bet it. 
I will uh, bled it. Um, Slatsy says, new player push for abs, Jimmy. I get it. I get it. It's just, you know, I got to stick to certain things, certain rules. And when you play two really bad hockey teams and dominate them and you're on a three-game homestand, I'm just not going to expect it to happen again. That's all. Uh, I certainly am not against the avalanche, but I just stick to these sort of things. Uh, you know, that's all. Uh, I get it. I get, they look absolutely dominant. They look absolutely dominant. Uh, Dave Redling uh, teasing the following. Belmont plus three. Now, Indiana State minus six. San Diego State money line. Central Michigan money line. High point minus 10. East Tennessee State minus 11. Having UNC Asheville minus 11 and a half. Rodney Barton in the house. And look at this. Dan Bonner, our guy, gifting five pub sports radio memberships. What a guy Dan is. Thank you, Dan. Blessing our action to get started. And that brings us to the giant horse race at the end of the day. Now that we have over 60 gold members, we're going to do three heats, three heats of 20, three heats of 20. Uh, top three will move on nine in the final race, one minute races. So it'll take about five minutes to finish off the show there. Uh, Chain Kim, I believe we have that for you, my man. Let's get your weekend started right. And thank you to Dan Bonner, our guy. JT Eel says, it's a great morning. Happy birthday, JT. The sweaty butcher ready to get to work. And we got Nunya in the house. Let's get after it right now. We begin with NHL. Let's bring on your star of Fridays. Now, brisk pace. Brisk pace. We don't need to keep the three-minute pace uh, for NHL. We can do five minutes a game. But once we get to college basketball, three minutes max, we've got to keep a brisk pace. And we've been very successful at it. We've been very successful on these Fridays with the help of your expert. Please welcome from Canada's black and yellow, black and yellow, Canada's steel town. Your guy and mine. Love working with him on these Fridays. Please welcome Bo Bano in the house. Ian Cameron, how are you, my friend? I'm great. Let's get to it. It's a busy Friday. Tons of conference tournament stuff in college basketball. So very excited. Great day ahead. Great day ahead. Let's get after it immediately. Uh, we get started at 9 p.m. is our first uh, pop-off here. 9 p.m. is when NHL gets started. Minnesota Wild, 29-27-6, and 14-15-2 and two on the road. The Colorado Avalanche, 39-20-5, and 25-6-0 and oh at home. We are at Ball Arena in Denver, Colorado. It's Philip Gustafson between the pipes. He's not been good this year. 3.30 goals against average, 8.92 save percentage, two shots. Going up against Alexander Georgiev who, you know, if you use the eye test, he looks pretty good out there. But when you study his numbers, he doesn't. It's a strange thing I uh, hear. He is, has played more games than any other goaltender in the NHL this year. He's been a workhorse. 32-15-3, and 2.89 goals against average, 9.01 save percentage, two shutouts. Let's go over to the line history here for this one. Set the game up and hand it over to Bobano. Minnesota power play this year, 22%. It's been strong. Their penalty killing has been weak, 74.4%. It's surprise. When you have Joel Erickson, uh, it's surprising to watch this uh, shorthanded group struggle. And I guess Jared Spurgeon not being around is a big reason for it. Colorado power play, 24.4%. We've all been surprised that it's not higher. It was higher when uh, Nishushkin was in front of the net, and he is – Hopefully going to be back soon. He's been in the player assistance program. He has returned to practice, and I think that will be a big boost to the lineup. 80.5% penalty killing. This is a Colorado team that's going to be a real tough outcome playoff time. I have no futures on them. Is that a mistake? I don't want to spread myself too thin because I have Oilers and Kings, but I, you know, I'm certainly interested in them. Uh, Colorado sitting right now at minus 209. They opened up at minus 205. I, I I really think that that's telling because of how dominant they've been. I just – not that you can't have a three-game homestand and completely dominate your opposition. I'm not saying that that's impossible. It's just it doesn't appeal to me. This total is at 6.5. Uh, opened up minus 108 to the over. Now it's minus 109 to the over. Uh, Rocco Rogers says Landis Cog also skated yesterday. Landis Cog wants to come back, man. He wants to come back. Nasty Nate says 12 more days until Pubba Palooza. I love it. So here we go. Uh, Marcus Johansson, Pat Maroon, and Marcus Felino. three left wingers are all out of the lineup for the Wild. Avalanche coming off their second straight win, fourth and five games, 7-2 at home over Detroit on Wednesday. So they've beaten the Blackhawks and the Wings by a combined score of 12 to two for through the first two games of the three game homestand. Uh, Chris Wagner and Logan O'Connor depth wingers are day to day and may or may not be in the lineup. And I'm off this game. 
And I watched every second. Let me make that clear. I watched every second of the Avalanche dominate the Red Wings. They look phenomenal. But it's just not in my wheelhouse to sit back and expect a team to completely dominate their opposition. And I think the Minnesota Wild are quite a bit better hockey team than Detroit without Larkin and the Chicago Blackhawks. Take it away, Bobana, Wild Avalanche. Yeah, just going to go with the over here. Um, over six and a half, I think it makes sense. I think uh, Minnesota's gone over in two straight. Uh, their offense has uh, perked up here these last couple of games. Uh, and they're probably going to have to score goals here if they're going to win this game. I don't think they're going to be shutting down uh, Colorado on their home ice with uh, Philip Gustafson and net uh, this abs team. I mean, aside from the Nashville loss five to one um, where the puck didn't go in pucks gone in in every other game, five, 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 and seven for Colorado in four of their last five games. So this offense is humming out, out, outside of that Nashville game. Um, but I don't know if I, I, I think I want the full game. I can make a case for Colorado team total over. That was a great bet. I thought on Wednesday against Detroit, because you had Detroit rolling in there, struggling a bit. Colorado in a revenge spot, too, for losing at Detroit just recently. Figured they might put it on them. Figured they would be good to get four goals. I mean, I certainly think Colorado team total over is a, is a, is a lean. I would look in that. It wouldn't shock me to see them get four. But I think Minnesota is going to score, too. Because if you actually look here at Minnesota, they're only five points back of Vegas. They're talking the talk that, hey, we're not giving up on the playoffs. Why should we? We're five points out, <laughs> even with, you know, some of the uh, uh, transactions that are going pre-trade deadline. When you look at their recent history against Colorado, the last two meetings, they beat Colorado 4-2. And the game before that in Colorado, 4-3 Colorado in a shootout. So Minnesota has been a thorn in Colorado's side here at Ball Arena. They've actually, you could argue, played <laughs> Colorado tougher here at Ball Arena than they have at XL Energy Center. So I'm not willing to jump in with Colorado tonight, either puck line or team total. I'm just going to go over, but I don't trust Minnesota to win. I don't. So I'm going to go over six and a half. I think that's the best look. I think both teams can contribute to this total. Uh, so for me, Jimmy, we'll get the uh, card started with that. Uh, over six and a half, Minnesota, Colorado at minus 105 at Bet Rivers. Over six and a half at minus 105 at Bet Rivers. And uh, the great Justin McKelvey and Scotty Rock uh, betting $100 on the Arizona UCLA game. And for the first time in betting with the bag history, immediate payout, great friends before and afterwards. You guys are leading by example. You are men leading by example. Not that women wouldn't do it either, so I shouldn't say men, women, but just the handicappers leading by example. Uh, let's. Uh, we got uh, getting wild. We got Terry in the house. Uh, says uh, he believes there's an opportunity here, an opportunity here for the Wild to upset here. Satsi says I love that Johansson got traded to Philly and then they put him on waivers. What a fall from grace! I, I told you, I told everybody that was going to happen this year. That this was a horrible mistake to bring him in, that he wasn't capable of doing it. Uh, now they had to make a trade for Middlestad. I, I hate saying it. He's a Vancouver boy who's disappointed us. Uh, ever, what, after two, He had two really strong years in the NHL. We had enormous hopes from him. He, he's like Monaghan. He's that, that tall center out of your wildest dreams, like Tage Thompson was after a 94-point season. It, it very difficult. It's very difficult to be a big center who can score in the NHL year after year after year. It's a tough league. And uh, shout out to uh, Justin and uh, Smoking Tree once more. Respect. So, uh, uh, and getting wild. Uh, Terry saying Vegas, Edmonton, Buffalo, Florida all had one new player playing and lost. Avs have four new players tonight, and it's Freaky Friday. Real Deal Prime says Tage is fine. Uh, I guess that cup is half full. And that's okay. Now, Terry we'll sometimes is guilty of spewing wild propaganda with no substance or evidence to back it up when he likes Whoa. the wild. Whoa. But I will say this about, Whoa. I'm joking, Terry. I hope you don't take that. But he's Whoa. right about this point. He loves his team. I love that. I love that about him. He loves his team. Uh, he does get frustrated with them. I also remember him saying they were done a few weeks ago. Now he thinks they can make the playoffs. But Terry's right about that. When he puts <laughs> in that the team's bringing in the new players in the lineup. They, they haven't won. You look at Tarasenko, Florida last night lost. Buffalo with Byram didn't get it done. Edmonton with their new guys lost at Columbus, Vegas. 
uh, with Hannafin and Mantha against Vancouver last night didn't win. There's something to that. It disrupts chemistry, you know, and all of a sudden it takes a few games to get comfortable. So there's something to that. When you're bringing in these new guys into the lineup after a trade, it's not always you're going to hit the ground running. That's a very real point. No, it is. It is. And I am off. I'm off the spot. Okay. Uh, let's roll on to the next game on the board. I have action on two of the next three, and I'm waiting. Uh, we'll be moving on the other one. So I've got action coming. Let's roll. 9 p.m. Eastern, the Detroit Red Wings, 33, 23, and 6, 15, 13, and 1 on the road at the Arizona Coyotes, 25, 32, and 5, 15, 15, and 0 at home. We're at Mullet Arena in Tempe, Arizona. James Reimer. Expected to be in the pipe between the pipes. Uh, he's a solid backup uh, who can get hot. Uh, he looked good when he came in in the third period of the Red Wings Colorado Avalanche game. And nice to get some rubber. And now he knows he's starting. I, I think this is a nice uh, combination for Reimer to have a strong game. Then you have Connor Ingram, 17, 16, and three, 2.85 goals against average, 908, save percentage, five shutouts. I think this is a nice recipe for him going up against the Detroit Red Wing team without Dylan Larkin, a uh, Detroit Red Wing team that ha will have and has had a very difficult time scoring without Dylan Larkin on the ice. Uh, Larkin is week to week with lower body injury. Uh, so it, it's about 13, 12 days at the earliest that he could come back. Detroit power play 23% on the season. Uh, look at it without Larkin. It's uh, not even close to that number. And penalty killing 80.4%. Arizona power play 22.6%. And penalty killing at 76.1%. And look at that. Saturated with a $99.99 dono. He's been running so hot. And he's sharing uh, his winnings with the channel. Uh, what a guy you are, Saturated. Uh, man, thank you. Uh, what a guy. What a guy. Uh, running hot. Keep running hot, saturated. And uh, thank you for – thank you, man. It says, uh, uh, we're running hot, boys, but the best is yet to come. Leche. Uh, respect, man, and thank you. Thank you. Our guy, saturated, leading by example. A lot of cappers leading by example in the chat right now. Uh, there is our guy, Ron Crawford. NHL spreadsheet play of the day is Detroit. Let's get that in here. Copied and pasted. And spreadsheet play today is VCU. I'll have that ready for our college basketball breakdowns here. And I know we got to speed up the pace a little bit. So let's move this over. Uh, but big shout out to our guy, Saturated. What a giant. I uh, don't know. If you, um, I hope that your action continues to deliver. And I know it will because you're such a sharp dude. So respect. Back to this Red Wings Coyotes game. The Red Wings have been outscored 16-5 to over this three-game losing streak. Uh, the Coyotes are on the second half of back-to-back, -back, losing 5-2 at home to the Wild last night. Uh, Zucker and Dumba are both being held out. They're going to be traded today. When the trades come in, uh, Jose will give us the breaking news. I'm on the under 6.5 at minus 104. Uh, let's go over the line history here for this one. Uh, I understand... Uh, well, I now understand as I've been uh, Slatsy shared with me the trends for this game to go over. And and, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, uh, you know, this is definitely going to go under nothing like that, because there's a lot of volatility uh, in any game that the Coyotes are in. They do have a lot of offensively talented forwards that sometimes lack defensive accountability. But I really like this under. I like it very much. I do not think that the Red Wings are built to win offensive hockey games right now. And I was surprised to see a six and a half. A genuinely surprised to see a six and a half. I think this should be a six. I'm on the under six and a half. It's now at minus 105 at Pinnacle. So there's been a one cent move in my favor. Michael Johnson says scary under bet, my guy. Not at all. Uh, and look, and I'm not sitting here saying it's not scary. I mean, I don't find this as scary at all. Have you watched the Detroit Red Wings play without Dylan Larkin? Because that last game against Colorado was the exact same thing that happened that first time without Dylan Larkin with when he they played the Rangers. They scored two goals and then are not heard of again. They're not coming close to scoring, and they know they have to be defensively accountable. And, you know, you put J.P. Comfort, you put Comfort on that first line, or, you know, we talked about the young first-rounder, the 2018 first-rounder that, that was replacing him. I got a lost his name in my head right now, but uh, I just don't see offense here. I don't find this scary at all. Uh, eight, one and one to the over last 10 versus the Wings. Uh, Slatsy's on the over, uh, you know, with that trend. I love the spot here. I love the under six and a half. Take it away, Bobano, Red Wings, Coyotes. 
I, I wish you luck. Um, I'm not on the over actually in this game, but I'm, I could only look that way uh, with Arizona. They're just giving up too many goals, five goals, four goals. Uh, the goaltending is bad. The defense in front of the goaltending is bad. What I like in this game is I love Detroit in this spot. I love Detroit in this spot. It's a huge bounce back for them. <clears throat> they got absolutely blasted uh, by Colorado. You're going to see probably Dumba, Zucker, um, maybe even Kerfoot. Kerfoot's name has been bandied about too uh, in the trade possibilities. So you could see multiple forwards dealt before 3 p.m. today for Arizona. And who knows what their lineup is going to look like. And last night they lose to Minnesota. Uh, didn't look all that impressive. One thing about Arizona is they didn't look all that threatening. Uh, in the uh, game last night against the uh, Minnesota Wild. Back-to-back -back now for them, a Detroit team coming off a of shellacking. And look, I don't think Detroit – Detroit wasn't great, but Colorado was just in one of those zones on Wednesday night when, when they've got the puck zipping around like that, coming in waves, attacking in waves. You can't stop them. And Detroit, you know, found that out the other night. I think they got a better game in them. I know they're definitely going to be hurting without Larkin. That's a huge loss for them. But you can deal with Arizona. I think, and get the job done right now, even without Dylan Larkin. So actually, there's two bets I like, because I also don't want to have to worry about what happens with Detroit if James Reimer shits the bed. You know, I don't trust him fully. He's had an up-and-down season. So I'm going to go with the money line, uh, minus 135 uh, on Detroit. Actually, there I think there's some better prices out there. Let me just uh, take a look. Uh, actually, minus 130 uh, is available at Heritage. We'll go with that. Minus 130 at Heritage for Detroit. I'm also going to go with Detroit. Um, team total over three and a half plus 108 uh, in this game. So a little bit of both. Team total in case James Reimer doesn't have his best, and that is a always a possibility. But I like Detroit money line as well. I think they get the job done. I know without Larkin is tough, but you're not facing Colorado anymore. Arizona, who knows who's not going to be here uh, after 3 p.m. today. They're not playing well. They're struggling. This is a 2-16 and 16 hockey team in their last 18 games. All things considered, even without Larkin, the price looks cheap to me in a bounce back spot with the better team. So Detroit minus 130 and team total over. You got it. You're locked in. Red Wings minus 130. Red Wings team total over three and a half plus 108. Spreadsheet play today from Ron Crawford is the Detroit Red Wings. And I am on the under six and a half at minus 104. And uh, we have a minus 127 at Circa. Thank you. All right. Very good. Uh, thank you for that coin, my man. All right. Let's roll on. Let's roll on. And, and Cheshire is saying, uh, you know, talking about the empty nets. I mean, it, yes, Arizona allowed five goals on the scoreboard, but only three were when there was a goalie That's in that. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, but I hear what you guys are saying and uh, good luck to all of us. Let's move on to the next spot on the board. <clears throat> 10 PM Eastern Dallas stars, 38, 17 and nine, 19, nine and five on the road at the Anaheim ducks, 23, 36 and three, 10, 21 and one at home Honda center in Anaheim, California. Let's get this one uh, started. This total, Opened up at six and a half at Pinnacle. Uh, it lasted there for about four hours. It moved to six. The under six was juiced at one point. Uh, then it, you know, uh, started, it, it went away. It became a plus money proposition. Got back up to six and a half at 9.46 a.m. Then dropped down to six, up to six and a half, dropped to six, up to six and a half. Right now it's back at six and a half, uh, minus 119 to the under. <clears throat> I don't care that Dallas scored seven goals at the Sharks on Tuesday. Uh, the Sharks are just an absolute mess. Uh, I do, I am concerned with Ottinger and the way he's playing. 899 save percentage right now. You know, I don't like that. Uh, John Gibson is one of those goalies who would prefer to have 45 shots on him. He always talks about that. He, he'd rather have 45 shots against him than 30. He's going to get that tonight. Dallas power play 23.1%, 81.4% penalty killing. Anaheim 19.3% power play, 75.8% penalty killing. Uh, there is my guy, Nordy, in the house. Uh, we, they got news. You know, we were all praying and thinking about Nordy and his family. They got news from the doctor, and it was hopeful. Hopeful, positive news, and they're going to be attacking uh, what's going on. They're going to be attacking it, and it was just it was great news. I, as soon as you gave me that news, I was like, oh, I just, I knew sometimes you just know things. And I just know, I just know this is going to get beaten. Nordy. I just know it. I know it. It's one of those things I just know in my heart. I know it's true. Uh, so I'm, I was very excited to hear the news. Uh, now we can't stop sending all the positive, healthy, uh, healing vibes to the Nordy family. 
Uh, but uh, love to Nordy. Okay, so back on this spot here. Uh, penalty killing for Anaheim, 75.8%. It's a problem. But this is an Anaheim team that hasn't been playing with. they got a cluster of injuries up front. Zegris and Brock McGinn are on the IR. Now, Carlson and McTavish. Uh, Carlson's missed three straight games. McTavish has missed two straight games. Troy Terry's been hurt on and off. And you have to play a certain way. And they did it perfectly against Ottawa. Now you're playing against a Dallas team with so much more offense than you. You can't allow odd man rushes. You can't get. You can't be in the penalty box. You have to dump and chase. You have to cycle. You have to keep the puck deep for as long as possible. With all that said, I love the under in this one. Uh, I'm on it. I got the under six and a half, a minus 120. Maybe I can get a tiny little bit better right now. Sagan and Dodonov. Dodonov are out of the lineup with lower body injuries. Those are two soft offensive forwards. I mean, you can say Dodonov's not soft, but Sagan certainly is. That aren't that defensively responsible. They're not going to be on the ice. I need Gibson to stand on his head. I need the Ducks to play strong, smart hockey. And I'm on the under six and a half. And this was another one where I was surprised to see a six and a half. Take it away for us here, Bobano Stars Ducks. Tyler Toffoli to the Jets. To the Jets. Wow. Winnipeg. I knew was Ooh. Wow, Winnipeg. Ooh, that's Jumped a big. No Carolina. Well, Carolina got canceled, but no Vegas. Ooh, no. that's a huge pickup wow. for the Jets. Yeah. Wow, that's a great one, Jose. That was fun. Wow, that yeah, was they've fun. They've been pretty quiet, so I figured, you know, Winnipeg, they need to make a move, and they just did. Oh, that was fun. That was really Perfect fun. Perfect fit. Stanley Cup winner. Still can play. Oh, he's a great fit. Great fit. Great hockey player. Uh, can do everything. Uh, wow. Okay, take it away here for us, Bobano Stars Ducks. As Dallas can't put away these bad teams. It's just remarkable. It's over and over again with them. I mean, they let these horrible hockey teams just hang around. San Jose, they needed overtime and a shootout. Back-to-back -back games to beat them. You look at Anaheim, 4-3 in overtime in January when they played them. Last year in Anaheim, Dallas won, but or in October they played Anaheim. It was three two stars, and they were hanging on in that game. In fact, you could argue Anaheim, you know, had a chance to win that game before that three two for Dallas in a shootout last year. Anaheim won two nothing last year at home. So the Dallas Stars against these low lights like San Jose and Anaheim, man, they just cannot put them away easily. I don't know if it's lackadaisical. I don't know if it's just you know the it's you see the other team and you say hey we should beat them easily and you just go through the motions but this has been a recurring theme for the Dallas Stars so the bottom line is I'm not laying minus 300 with them I don't know if I fully trust Anaheim I would have preferred Dostal in that quite honestly Dostal has been terrific lately he's the reason why they were close against uh or beat Ottawa the other night I should say he's the reason why you know they've been in a lot of games lately he's been playing great Gibson I don't have as much confidence in but the fact that he's probably going to get peppered with shots. You're right. He does play better with a higher volume of shots that he's faced. I'm taking a shot with the draw here. Uh, there's just too much evidence of Dallas playing tight, close hockey against these team, these lower level up, you know, bottom feeders. It's been a repeated issue for them. It's been a, a repeated theme for them until I see evidence that changes. they just went to overtime twice. They just went past regulation twice with San Jose. And we just, you know, we're seeing Anaheim at least be feisty. You know, they battled Vancouver tough over the weekend. That was the other game. Dostal played pretty well against the Canucks, even though Vancouver won 2-1. to one. He played very well against Ottawa. The team was right in the game. I know they've traded away. They're shorthanded as well with uh, injuries. They traded away Henrik and Carrick and others. Um, so there's concern there. But they hung in there, and they beat Ottawa with all those guys out. And I've just not liked this mindset of Dallas, where they just have not put their foot down in these spots against the worst teams. So, I'm taking that draw price. It's just too good to pass up knowing what we've seen out of the Stars recently and knowing how in the past against Anaheim, they've had a lot of tough games against them, close games. So give me the draw here. Dallas-Anaheim draw plus 430. Ooh, that's the biggest draw of the year for you. Bobano draw plus 430 in Dallas-Anaheim. All right, we know tip-off of Radford. High point is in 23 minutes. Don't worry. We'll have lots of time to get our action in. Let's get into the final game of the 
NHL card here at 10 p.m. Eastern. We have the Winnipeg Jets, the aforementioned Jets, who just picked up Tyler Toffoli, 39-17-5, and 18-9-3 on the road at Seattle Kraken, 28-23-11, 14-11-5 at home. We're at Climate Pledge Arena, Seattle, Washington. So I lost with the Jets Kraken when they met on Tuesday, and I want my money back. And I expect to get it. Let's see what do we got. We can't hear you. Must be another trade. Pat Maroon to the Boston Bruins. Oh, wow. I don't know if he can skate. I don't know if he's breaking newsworthy, but that's good for No, Boston. I mean, he's going to be helpful. He's going to be, you know, yeah. uh, great to have him in the room. Well, the, the thing is about these hockey breaking news, I don't know who any of these guys are, so I don't know if they're big or small when I'm telling you. <laughs> no guys. worries. No worries. Keep That's firing them up. Good one. Fire them up. I love it. Here we go. So uh, so I'm going to be on the Jets night. Now, first off, I expect uh, Connor Hellebuck to start tomorrow night against the Canucks. I've got Connor Hellebuck listed. I don't know if and that's changed. And I love Brissois. I love him. But I do think the market will react a little bit. Now, Hellebuck uh, is sick. He's not the only one. Nate Schmidt is sick. But Nate Schmidt is the sixth of six defensemen. So I expect the Jets to exact revenge in this spot. But I haven't bet it yet. This total is sitting at five and a half at a pick em. It's going to be a tight game. I expect to have to use the minus one line. I might not. And you don't want to. You really don't want to around this number. And I might not have to. Uh, you know, this was mine. I didn't realize it. I did not realize it. Right after the show started, this went down to minus 110. Wow. It's back at minus 120. This went down to minus 110, and it was bet. Uh, God, I, I mean, what am I supposed to do? We're, we're doing the show. That would be in the wheelhouse. So right now, we've had no movement on the Jets from the opening line. They had their two-game winning streak snapped in that 4-3 loss at home to these Kraken. Gabe Velarde out with the upper body injury. Uh, the Kraken win was their fourth in five games, and I want to attack them without Vince Dunn in the lineup. This is a Kraken team with a 21.1% power play. Let's grade this power play without Vince Dunn quarterbacking it. Vince Dunn's been spectacular. I want to fade this. Uh, it's not that I really want to fade them. I still think they're 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 probably better than their record indicates. You know, uh, but uh, I think that we're going to get some value fading them. Uh, I'm not. There's certain teams that I want to fade nonstop, and we've talked about it all year. Uh, this really isn't one of them, but I do expect the Jets to exact revenge and will be on the Jets. I just want Persua to be announced, and I'd, I'd like to get it at minus 115 or minus 120. Minus 120, now I could get it at. Uh, here at 365, it's minus 125. Has that changed at all? Oh, it's down to minus 120 there, too. Okay, I, I'm not, I think it's time to move on this. I don't think it goes lower than that. Take it away, Bobano. Jets cracking. I'm just looking right now at Winnipeg's recent form and I'm in regards to this total. And I'm just uh, looking right now just to confirm. Eight of their last 10 games would have gone over this total. To me, I, I don't. Five and a half looks a little light right now just because the Jets are scoring a little bit more. I don't think their defense has totally been locked in. Uh, of late we did see over the other night sometimes i worry a little bit about the next game being an under when i see an over the first meeting and now they're playing just a few days later but i'm telling you what a five and a half right now with the winnipeg i would not be comfortable betting under you know they're scoring now five goals against good carolina team in that comeback five goals against buffalo it was four three the other night uh, against seattle yeah give me the over here in this game five and a half it's just to me a little too low seattle's gone over in two straight games vince dunn's a huge loss as far as the offensive component he brings puck movement power play quarterback i get it uh, but right now these two teams are performing better offensively their advanced numbers show it as well they're performing better offensively than probably where this total currently is so i like over five and a half minus 106 as well the juice is very cheap we also may not see connor hellebuck tonight illness may not start tonight and uh, it's back to back for Winnipeg. They may rest them until tomorrow. Uh, and it will be probably Grubauer Decord. Decord was in against Winnipeg the other night. Do they go back to him because he won that game? We'll see. But if not, Grubauer has been excellent lately. But even with that, I think five and a half is a little light. I'm also on the draw in this game. I can't deny another draw here with these two teams. It almost went to overtime the other night. You look at series history, Jets and Kraken. 
We've seen five straight head-to-head meetings, one-goal games, 4-3-3-2-3-2-3-2-4-3. Five straight one-goal games, great chance, I think, to go past regulation here. So plus 340 draw as well. Plus 340 draw for Bobano. And do we expect the line to move a few cents when Brassois is announced in? Yeah, if Brassois is in, you'll see Seattle money. I'm I'm confident in that. We always do when Hellebuck's out. So I guess I'm going to have to wait because I, I would prefer minus 115 than minus 120 because now I don't have to but take if Hellebuck's in, it might move a little toward Winnipeg. So we got to be right on top of that news if you're going to get the uh, – Best of the number, especially if Hellebuck's in. Yeah, I, I really expect Hellebuck to get an extra day. I mean, I just, I expect, I, even if he was flown right to Vancouver, that wouldn't have surprised me. So um, uh, we'll see how this. So I'm going to keep waiting. I think Brassois is going to be announced here. Uh, Razor Sharp Picks, go get that cash, my man. Thank you for hanging with us every morning. Uh, enough flush out. I have Hella or Grubauer, excuse me, uh, projected in net. He unbelievably, after all this time, has for the first time shown that he's the best goaltender on the team. Uh, now, Joey Decord, they're so lucky they've had his stability as they move forward. Uh, so let's, uh, and don't, I, I do not think, Brissois is being better than Hellebuck over the last month. Now, of course, in the most important game, you'd want Hellebuck in net, but I, I do not think that Brissois is a problem at all for Winnipeg. Okay, so let's review all action here in NHL. We have 16 minutes away from our first tip-off in college basketball. Bobano's on the over 6.5, minus 105 in Winnipeg, Colorado. Spreadsheet play today from Ron Crawford is Detroit. I'm on the under 6.5 in Detroit, Arizona. Bobano's on the Red Wings, and the Red Wings team total over 3.5. I'm on the under 6.5 and minus 120 in Dallas, Anaheim. Bobano's on the draw, plus 430. I'm going to be on the Winnipeg Jets. Bobano's on the over 5.5, minus 106, and the draw, plus 3. 40. That is NHL for today. Let's get into college basketball here. Uh, it ended up being a real low volume day for me. Somehow, I couldn't believe it. Going over the notes and then going over everything like I do at the end of the show to put in place my bets. Only four bets for me yesterday, and it was funny. I cashed in Missouri State with you guys, and then my first bet after that was Pacific first half. And they went down 33. Yeah, I was on Pacific as well. Uh, they went down 33 to 2. Ever. <laughs> oh, uh, you know what? I yeah, is that, it would be two and a half, and you still don't win. <laughs> you know what? Having it just be over immediately was fine. Like, we got lots to focus on, lots what of action. What do you, you know? do with Pepperdine today? Now, this is still not a great team. They played this ridiculous game yesterday where they're winning by 50 and up by 60 almost at one point. That's going to be a fun discussion. Pepperdine and San Diego later. Yeah, and that was the first thing I looked at was the back San Diego, but the market was telling me do not do that, so I, I just gonna wait on that one. But uh, then, uh, then I I cashed Jacksonville. Look, they didn't beat Stetson, and I know you guys, some of you have futures on Stetson, but they beat Jacksonville, and I kept telling you guys the slipper fits, it didn't fit tight enough, but I got the cash, and then I lost with you guys on Oregon minus three, so a two and two day down zero point two five units. Well, Bano, let's get to work. Here we go. Again, this game starts in 15 minutes. So we can also live bet these games as the show goes on. 12 p.m. Eastern, the three-minute clock. Jose, when you can, get it loaded up. Big South Championship quarterfinal. Radford Highlanders, 16 and 16, 5 and 11 in the Big South. At the High Point Panthers, 24 and 7, 13 and 3 in conference. We are at High Point for this. This is a very early game for the home team hosting the tournament. 12 p.m. start for them let's get into the situation here and get into the line history well that is uh loading here okay here we go so let's talk about the line history here from a total standpoint we're using bet online market moves if you're looking for a new account you can do it through our website new account at bet online they'll give you go through our website and use pub sports they'll give you a hundred percent bonus up to a thousand dollars and it does not have to be bitcoin this total is sitting at 151 minus 112 to the over it opened up at 150 and a half so it's gone up a half point from a spread perspective radford is an 11 point dog 11 point dog here uh, they opened up as a 10 point dog uh, this got up to 11 and a half this got up to 12 and a half this morning before coming back we have them as an 11 point dog right now let's go into the cash flow for this one from a cash flow perspective it's 50 oh god 
55% of the tickets on high point and 87% of the cash. Big bets coming in on high point. 78% of tickets, 75% cash on the over. Uh, Radford had that big win against uh, USC Upstate, 67-60 to get this started. Uh, high point hasn't played in six days, and they got that loss at Longwood. That helps them, I think. You know, snap that three-game winning streak. Uh, and also what helps this team, you know, high point be – ready to go is that they lost uh, badly. Uh, oh, that's Radford lost badly. Sorry. That's my bad. They lost. Sorry. That's so I messed that one up. Let's go over this one again. Uh, high point destroyed Radford at home. 99 to 74 Radford shot 9.1% from three. I wish the big bets weren't on high point because I would really like to fade the pressure in the early game on high point early first half uh, high point went into Radford and beat them 85 to 71. Take it away for us. Bobano big South championship quarterfinal Radford high point. Yeah. I've seen me some big South basketball in this time slot for years, this Friday noon Eastern time slot, the number one seed and they're laying a double digit number and people think it's going to be easy wrong. I don't think it's going to be easy. And I know they blew out Radford twice by double digits this season. But Radford played one heck of a game yesterday. This is not back-to-back -back because this was Wednesday when Radford won their first tournament game, beating USC Upstate 67-60. The one thing about Radford, too, is culture, right? Tradition. What do we see year in, year out from Radford in the Big South tournament? Throw out the record in the regular season. When the conference tournament comes around, Radford is heard from. How many years have we seen Radford get to the quarters, to the semis, to the championship game of the Big South Tournament? They're built for this. They always play their best basketball year in and year out in this conference at conference tournament time. Too many points, a lot of pressure on high point, in my opinion. A high point team that was not expected to be this good. No one thought high point number one seed, by the way, uh, in the Big South Conference this year. I think this is a few too many points. I think they get tested right out of the gate here. There's a closer game. Maybe high point wins, but high point by five, high point by eight, not by 13 or 12 or more. Give me Radford here, plus 11 and a half, minus 110, Bet Rivers. Radford plus 11 and a half at minus 110 at Bet Rivers. And Mikey Money going on the under two, first half under. We see these early games go under so often. I, I would like to be on Radford first half, but, you know, it just doesn't fully correlate and. I don't know. I, I, I'd prefer everything to correlate right now with all these opportunities and all these games on. So at this point, as much as I want Radford first half, I'm not going to do anything at this point, right? This second, but I have 10 minutes to make a decision here. We move on. Uh, next up for us, 1 p.m. action. This one pop, you know, ah, God, I want to join you guys bad, but I think I'm just going to stay straight at this point let's roll on the next spot for us 1 p.m eastern we head to the missouri valley right, conference Mikey, i gotta pop that game on it's about to start yeah, it is about to start yeah right. get that rolling yep. uh we head to the mvc quarter finals this one is at 1 p.m eastern we're gonna have a lot of afternoon action to get us through the day missouri state bears who were very good to me yesterday 17 and 15 8 and 12 in conference at the indiana state sycamores 26 and 5 17 and 3 in conference we're at the enterprise center in st louis missouri uh missouri state as we talked about, you know, they snapped that losing streak against UIC. They didn't shoot very well, so it wasn't like they had a bunch of confidence shooting the ball, but they carried that over against Murray State, a team that had beat them both times in the regular season. Indiana State had that slap in the face. They got ranked, had the slap in the face, and then finished off with four straight victories. Let's talk about what's happened when Missouri State faced Indiana State this season. Uh, it was the last time they met, Saturday, February 10th uh, at Missouri State. It was a very tight game. Indiana State won 73-71. Uh, earlier than that, at Indiana State, Indiana State smashed and grabbed 88 to 66. So that is the situation uh, that we have here. Let's get into the line history and the cash flow and see what Bobano wants to do. We're sitting here at 11 and a half plus 11 uh, and a half. Oh, let's get this up here. Line movement-wise, this opened up at 10. It got up to 12 
So very similar movement to the game that we just talked about. Now at this point, we have a point and a half move towards Indiana State. And then when we get to the total, you have 91% of the tickets and 85% of the cash on the under. Uh, get this up here. On the under. And what is – sorry, I screwed this up here. Let me get this back here. On the – Total right now, we have this sitting at 149.5. It opened up at 148.5, so we have a one-point move towards the over despite all this money being on the under. And from a spread perspective, we have 48% of tickets and 58% of cash on Missouri State. Take it away for us, Bobano, the MVC tournament quarters, Missouri State at Indiana State. Oh, do we have a... Oh, sorry. We have a frozen a Bobano. Let's pull him out there and get him back in action. Uh, Bobano, take it away. Missouri State, Indiana State. Yeah, this is uh, credit to Missouri State. I mean, that was that was a hell of a defensive uh, effort yesterday against Murray State. Well, but, well, let's see if you can duplicate that because you're going against the number one offense in the Missouri Valley by far. and It's not close. I mean, <laughs> Indiana State's just a lethal team offensively. They're usually good to score in the 80s, something they did routinely all year. Head-to-head -head this year, uh, Indiana State did win both games. The most recent game, though, at Missouri State was close, and Missouri State covered. It was 73-71 that game. By the way, totals betters, worth noting, under in both head-to-head -head meetings this year, Missouri State and Indiana State. Also of note for totals betters, Missouri Valley basketball yesterday, and long-term, we have seen these games go under in this building in St. Louis. And we saw it again yesterday. The only game that went over shouldn't have gone over. And that was the overtime game with UIC and Southern Illinois at night. It only went over the total because of overtime. So this has been a very much an over venue uh, here in the Missouri Valley. Um, and, you know, when I look at this matchup here with Missouri State and Indiana State, you know, you see four straight unders to this year, total in the high 140. I know Indiana State plays fast and I know they can light it up, but you know, I, I, I don't I don't bet unders because I'm terrible long term with them. You know that. But I would certainly lean in that direction uh, here in this game. And as far as the side goes, you know, they scored 88 in one game. They scored 73 in the other. So the Indiana State team total I did consider, but I passed on that. M Missouri State, believe it or not, down the stretch here, that's three straight covers for them. You know, it's a lot of points. Really, I was going back and forth on this game and ended up on nothing. So we'll pass. I lean under, though. And I'm going to pass on that first game. As much as I would like to be on Radford first half, I will cheer you guys on with Radford. I just I'm keeping things a certain way and things just need to correlate fully for me. Uh, Missouri state, Indiana state is a stay off here. Uh, Ray D'Amico liking Indiana state first half says they're very good out of the gate. Lucas Ryan says Sycamores are my squad, but I got Drake winning this thing. And Lucas Ryan is on the team total over 81 for the Sycamores. Let's roll on. Let's roll on. Next up for us is the coastal athletic association championship the caa we have william and mary tribe nine and 22 four and 14 in conference at the north carolina a and t aggie seven and 24 five and 13 in conference with ent entertainment and sports arena in washington dc uh, william and mary tribe this is uh, each you know first round of the tournament uh, both these teams haven't played since saturday and william and mary got the win they beat hampton now look we know that hampton is at the very bottom of the ledger here in conference, but it's still nice to get a win and to stop the losing streak. We saw that with Missouri state. So NC a and T are in the throes of a mighty losing streak, but for William and Mary, they snap a nine game losing streak with that win against Hampton. So they have played NC a and T just once this year and they lost 76 69 at NC a and T. Now they get a chance to play them once again. Is this shaping up for a move on the Tribe? Uh, NC a t in the throes of a real legit losing streak. Uh, they almost stopped it against Campbell. It didn't come through. So they have lost nine straight games, lost by two at Campbell to close the season out. So there you go. That's the rest situation. Both teams played on Saturday. Let's take a look at the line history situation. Uh, this total is sitting at 138.5. It opened up at 140. So we have a 
point and a half move towards the under on the spread. This opened up with William and Mary minus five. They're now minus six and a half. Now the first move did go towards NCA and T, but it has come back. William and Mary is now minus six and a half. That is very interesting. Take a look at the cash flow in this one. 44% of the tickets and 55% of the cash is on William and Mary. So it's not like there's a ton of money pushing them in this direction. I find William and Mary very interesting. Uh, we got the taint play of the day. It is Tulane. I've lost twice in a row on Tulane, and I want to back him again today. This might push me there. We'll talk about that game. Take it away for us here, Bobano. CAA, first round, William and Mary, North Carolina A&T. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, an ugly game. It's two of the worst teams in the uh, CAA uh, coming into this tournament. Uh, North Carolina A&T is on a nine-game losing streak coming into this one, but they did cover their number in the last game against uh, Campbell, losing by two uh, in that game. But other than that, it's been a pretty rough run for them. William and Mary, tell you what, not much better uh, from them. They're one and nine straight up in the last uh, 10 games, but they are off a win against Hampton, 85-73. They've actually gone over in two straight um, in the, entering this game. Uh, North Carolina A&T, uh, they have actually a little bit trended over as well. Um, kind of lean that way with the over here. Um, Look, I'm not laying six, six and a half with William and Mary. North Carolina A&T is pretty bad too. Uh, but if you gave me a choice here in this game, uh, I would take the points here. These are, I don't trust either of these teams. You could flip the, this point spread to North Carolina A&T. And I don't trust either of these teams to win by a, this kind of a margin uh, here in this game. So I'd actually lean to the North Carolina A&T side, but I don't think I like it enough to make it official. I'm going to be on William and Mary first half in this. Where Benga coming off a win, put up 85 points, got the monkey off their back, and now it's time to deliver right from the tip off. I I understand Bobano's trepidation for them to cover this, you know, full game. I think they come out flying. I will let you know when I bet it. I'm gonna be line shopping. I'm only using Bet365 and Pinnacle right now. Uh, so those are the only books that I'm using, but uh, I will figure out how I'm going to bet this. William and Mary first half will be for me. Uh, let's roll on. Let's roll on. So next up, we head to the Big South. We go to back to High Point, North Carolina for this one. Longwood Lancers, 18 and 13, 6 and 10 in the Big South at the Winthrop Eagles, 17 and 14, 8 and 8 in the Big South. We have the Big South quarterfinals here. Let's set this one up and hand it over to Bobano. So the Longwood Lancers... Uh, bounced back, got that win over High Point, 74-72 at home to close out the year. It was impressive, and it was a big win. This team was only 6-10 and 10 in conference. And now High Point had it, you know, already they were going to win the conference, the Big South, so they, they had clinched. What the hell's wrong with me? Uh, so that snapped a two-game losing streak for Longwood. Uh, Winthrop has lost two straight. They lost at High Point in overtime, 196. They played really tough there. They also lost at home to Gardner-Webb to close out. <laughs> Hit me. Ben Myers uh, acquired from Colorado for the Ducks. There you go. Mid-round draft pick. So congratulations, Anaheim. That's big time right there, Jose. Thank you. Okay, well let's, roll on. let's roll on. It's still good. Just keep them coming. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so uh, these teams we can't have... let the modern-day Bob McKenzie think he's doing a bad job right there. No, I love it. I love it. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Uh, so Longwood faced Winthrop at Winthrop, lost 68 to 60 in overtime. Faced them again at home and beat them 84 to 74. That is our situation. Let's pull up the line history for this one. We have Winthrop, as you could imagine, is just a one-point dog, very evenly matched squad. There's been no movement at all, none whatsoever on the spread. Let's see if there's been anything on the money line. And on the money line, we're sitting at minus 108. Has there been any movement there? Uh, yes, uh, three cents of movement towards Winthrop. So very little uh, movement here on the side. From a total side of things, we are dealing with a 144. This opened up at 147 and a half. So that's a big move towards the under. And then when we get to the cash flow, 87% of tickets and 93% of cash is on Winthrop. It's a lot of money on them. With the line not moving, 
73% of tickets and 89% of cash on the under, and the line's moved in that direction. Take it away for us, Bobano. Interesting one here, Big South Cortex. I like Winthrop here. Uh, this is another one where it's all about culture. It's all about a team that's capable of going a long way in the conference tournament every year, and that's Winthrop. Uh, and I know they're off two straight losses, but high point, the number one seed in a close game on the road. Heartbreaker against Gardner-Webb. It was a back-and-forth game. You know, you're getting them as a small dog here. And to be honest with you, before these last two games, I think you could have made the case for Winthrop to be favored here in this game. But now they're off two losses. You get them as a small dog here. Uh, Longwood, of course, beat High Point in their last game. The number one seed, very impressive. They've also had some really bad clunkers. They've been blown out by, you know, uh, some mediocre teams in this conference. Charleston Southern, you know, beat them uh, earlier in the season. You know, I like what I'm I think Winthrop can wipe the slate here. You get him a small dog. This is, an, again, a situation where a team that has repeatedly, year in and year out, made runs uh, in this tournament. It wouldn't surprise me to see them do that one more time here again. So, yeah, we're going to go with the uh, Winthrop uh, in this one here, and we'll take them at plus one and a half, minus 115 at BetMGM. Uh oh, you're muted, Jose. Fuck. Damn. Good, because I couldn't pronounce his name. Kyle Ocposo going oh. to Florida. Wow. wow. Buffalo trading the veteran away. Buffalo is wow. very lucky to get him off the books. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, for some, it's not for much some left on human the name, Kali, so, so he has a J in his name. I don't Probably Showstrom or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Salzen yeah. and then a conditional yeah. seventh. Okay. There we wow. go. Uh, get some leadership in the room. And, you know, with Ocposo's, I mean, he got that huge contract. I know he was scoring and he's scoring on power play goals and he was big at the time, but he slowed down. It's all leadership and character that kept him there. That's interesting. That is uh, interesting. Okay, so I'm very interested in Longwood here. Uh, Obama's moved on Winthrop, plus one and a half, minus 115. I'm not going to move on anything uh, at this point, I want to get the William and Mary first half in. So we'll see how uh, everything bangs out. Let's I just was looking over that William and Mary game more, Jimmy. Yeah. I'm moving on the over in that game. It's just too low. I mean, the, the two games in the season series with William and Mary, Bill and his bitch, as I say, and North Carolina A&T, they both went over. The, they both would have gone over this number with where it is right now. I know overs can be dicey in some of these conference tournament games, but it's a little low in my opinion here. So I'll go with over 138 and a half minus 106 for William and Mary A and T. Over 138 and minus 106 for Bobano. We move on and we move back to the Missouri Valley Conference here in the Enterprise Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, let's roll into this one. 3.30 p.m. Eastern with the Belmont Bruins, 20 and 12, 12 and 8 in conference at the Northern Iowa Panthers, 18 and 13, 12 and 8 in conference. Uh, Belmont, four-game winning streak right now, playing good basketball. So is Northern Iowa on a three-game winning streak themselves. Uh, Belmont destroyed you know, Valpo, bottom of the ledger, uh, last out. Uh, but both teams winning basketball games. Let's take a look at what's happened when they faced off against each other. Uh, so just Oh, no, two. So back early, early, early in the year, November 29th, uh, Belmont went to Northern Iowa and beat them 90 to 70, beat them up badly. And what did Northern Iowa do? Exact revenge. And this is the, though that, that, this is the angle that Mikey Money was hammering all year long. Uh, then they lose at home to Northern Iowa, 83-72. Very, very interesting matchup here. Let's take a look at the line history. This opened up with Belmont minus one, and that's where we're at, Belmont minus one. They did get up to minus two for a little bit, but right back to where we started at minus one. Then from a total side of things, this opened up at 149. It's now at 151, so a two-point move to the over. When we get to the cash flow Oh, just moved. Damn. Sorry. Six, 56 percent of the tickets and 83 percent of the cash on Belmont and the line's not moving. No help on the total. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Uh, DC Capper liking Belmont here. Take it away for us. Uh, floor is yours. Bobano, Belmont, Northern Iowa. Yeah, I'm going to be betting this personally small this game. Because I have Belmont to win this conference tournament. I took them at a very uh, good uh, price to win the uh, 
the Missouri Valley uh, Conference uh, Tournament. Uh, let me just uh, check which, uh, what I got it at. But, uh, yeah, uh, I think in this situation here, they very much uh, can win this conference tournament. Casey Alexander's a good coach. They, they're playing two, 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 plus 2,000, 20 to 1, by the way, for Belmont to win the uh, conference tournament. They had a lot of injuries this year. You know, they were medi <laughs> mediocre for much of the con <laughs> conference season, but they had a lot of injuries. They're finally healthy. They're playing better defense. And that's the thing about this these Belmont totals this year. Belmont long-term, they've, they've been an over type of team, run and gun, high-octane offense, and uh, suspect defense. This year, I don't. their offense is still very good. I don't think it's as good, but more importantly, they're playing some of the best defense they've played in years. So that's why they've been an under-machine, believe it or not, entering this game. Uh, so be careful with these Belmont overs, uh, Belmont 19 and 12 to the under, believe it or not this season. And we know Missouri Valley tournament games have often trended under, uh, these two teams played twice during the regular season. Actually the road team won both games. Belmont won by 20 at Northern Iowa and Northern Iowa won by 11 at Belmont. So the road team has done well in both head to head meetings. I just like the way Belmont's going. And again, Belmont right now is better because they're healthier than they've been all season. They're playing their best basketball right now. What do they want? Four straight, covered four straight. They're eight and one straight up, eight and one against the spread their last nine games. I think they roll the momentum of yesterday, absolutely destroying, taking apart Valparaiso, and they roll it right into a victory today against Northern Iowa. Now, Northern Iowa's formidable. Solid program. Ben Jacobson's been there forever. He's a great coach. But I think Belmont's just rolling too well right now. I like the momentum they've got. So we'll go with Belmont minus 114. Money line. Chad Ruweld. Ruweld. To the New York Rangers. All right. There you go. Rangers, a little depth on their blue line. Very yeah, good. nothing wrong with that. I like it. Uh, I like it. Let's roll on Belmont minus 114 for Bobano. We head to or back to Washington, D.C. here for the Coastal Athletic Association first round. Hampton Pirates versus Elon Phoenix. Uh, Hampton just lost by 12 at William & Mary. We know they're at the very bottom of the ledger here. Elon's lost three of their last four, just lost to Monmouth by 15. Let's get into the line history here for this one and set this one up and see what happened when these two teams faced each other. And... Elon faced Hampton just once this year and lost 80. Uh, Hampton lost to Elon at home, 80 to 74 uh, in their loan meeting. So here we go. Line history wise, this opened up at three and a half. It's still at three and a half. There's been a five cent move towards Elon. There was a half point move, but it's come back. Then from a total side of things this opened up at 150 and it's now all the way down to 147 and it's heavily juiced to the under it's 13 for radford first half by the way wow god just uh, and my shit slipped through my goddamn hands then cash wise here they look nervous they're turning the ball over they're treating that basketball like a hand grenade right now high point so all right 46 percent of tickets 79 percent of the cash is all on right Elon. there's 30 other games today or 26 22 yeah. other games you're good no it's all good it's all good uh it's all good keeping a certain system and you'll miss opportunities and it is what it is 78 percent of tickets 94 percent of cash on the under we've seen it drop quickly take it away for us a bo bano uh hampton elon give me those pirates are mighty Hampton here for me, plus the points. I mean, what's Elon doing on a neutral court laying for? I mean, seriously. I mean, it's not like they're anything to write home about either in this game. And, uh, you know, I, I, these are two of the, uh, you know, bottom uh, three or four teams in the conference. Uh, you know, you look at the two meetings. I know Elon won both. That's why they're favored here. But one was a two-point win. One was a six-point win. You look at this Hampton team, you know, and plus Elon's lost three of four coming into this. Hampton, meanwhile, uh, you know, they're only three and two in their last five, but they're four and one against the spread. They've been a nice little underdog lately. In fact, they've covered four of their last five in the underdog role. We've got them on a neutral court here. Uh, that's significant. Uh, another thing to uh, factor in here to this uh, uh, situation with uh, these two teams is that I believe we have, um, as I flip it here, 
yeah, we've got, I think, a slight edge in the free throw department, too, for Hampton. They get to the line more uh, than Elon does as well. Uh, and like I said, they've, they've, they've cashed some tickets for me uh, in the underdog role here down the stretch. So I like the idea of getting points here with Hampton in a game that feels like more of a coin flip. This should be closer to pick them to me, bottom line. You know, it really should be. I don't know if Elon should be laying four. I thought maybe you'd make Elon a one point, two point favorite. I don't know about four. So, yeah, I'm going to take Hampton here, plus four, minus 110. Hampton plus four at minus 110. Let's lock this in for Bobano. Hampton plus four at minus 110. All right, let's roll on. Next up, we head to the SoCon Championship first round. We have the Citadel Bulldogs, 11 and 20, 3 and 15 in the Southern. Uh, sorry, 3 and 15 in the Southern at the Mercer Bears, 15 and 16, 8 and 10 in the Southern. We're in Asheville, North Carolina for this tournament. Uh, Citadel's lost two straight and three of four, come off losing 92 80 to Samford. Uh, the Mercer bounced back off that loss to Chattanooga uh, by beating up on Fer well, beating Furman 82 to 75. Uh, they've been playing good basketball. Let's see what's happened when these two teams have met here. Uh, they play Citadel met Mercer twice. Citadel beat Mercer at home 68 to 66 and then went to Mercer and lost 87 to 78 uh, later in the year. Let's pull up the line history then for this spot here from a point spread. Come on, help me. From a point spread standpoint here, we are sitting here with a minus four. This opened up at minus three. We have a one point move towards Mercer. From a total side of things, this is sitting at 139, opened up at 140. We have a one-point move towards the under. And then cash flow-wise for this one, 70% of the tickets and 79% of the cash is on Mercer. One-point move towards them. Is that enough for Mercer backers? 67% of tickets on the under. Take it away for us, Bobano, the Mercer Bears in the first round of the SoCon. They are just better, in my opinion, than the Citadel uh, and Mercer. I like actually what I've seen from this Mercer. Mercer looks like the kind of team with the way they rolled and got their game together down the stretch. They could maybe they could do some damage in this tournament. I actually took a small flyer on Mercer to win this conference tournament, the big the, the SoCon. I mean, the way they played down the stretch, they had wins against a very good Samford team outright as underdogs. They beat Furman on the road, who's been the uh, the king of this conference in years past, 82-75, outright as underdogs. No, I really like what I'm seeing right now from the Mercer Bears. Uh, their offense is humming. They're scoring in the high 70s, 80s in most games. Uh, five straight overs uh, as well uh, for Mercer going into uh, this game today. Citadel is not a team you trust defensively. We just saw them give up 81 to East Tennessee and 92 to Samford uh, in their last two games uh, down the stretch. So I like Mercer here, not only to win this game, but they're going to be a they're going to be a tough out for whoever they play in the subsequent rounds, I believe, in this uh, conference tournament. So let's take Mercer minus three and a half, minus one eighteen uh, at Patano. I'm also going to add the over in this game, over one thirty seven and a half, minus one twenty five at Proline Plus. Think that's just too low given Mercer's efficiency on offense lately and Citadel's defensive problems. So uh, Mercer minus three and a half over one thirty seven and a half. You are locked in, Bobano. We roll on. Next up for us, we head back to High Point, North Carolina for the Big South quarters. Charleston Southern Buccaneers, 10 and 19, 6 and 10 in the Big South at the UNC Asheville Bulldogs, 20 and 11, 12 and 4 in the Big South. Let's set this one up for you guys, of course. Asheville, big favorites in this one. Uh, Charleston Southern's lost two of their last three. And UNC Asheville had that wake-up call. It cost them first in the conference. They lost at Longwood. Then they lost at home to Gardner-Webb by a point. Finished off the year with that 71-62 victory at Radford. Let's see what's going on when these teams have met this year. We have uh, Charleston Southern faced UNC Asheville twice. They lost 71-65 at home, and then they got destroyed at UNC Asheville, 86-55. to Let's take a look at the line history for this one. Start with the spread. We have, where is it here? We have Bet Online 
holding UNC Asheville minus 12 and a half. They opened up at minus 12 from a total scenario. We have this sitting at 141 and a half, and it opened at 143, a point and a half move towards the under. And then cash flow wise here, we have 42% of the tickets and 98% of the cash on Charleston Southern. Now remember, this is 866 tickets in, and we have no help on the total. Take it away for us here, Bobano, Big South Quarters, Charleston Southern at UNC Asheville. Yeah, Asheville with Drew Pember, you know, they're obviously dangerous here in the uh, Big South uh, Conference Tournament. There's no question. Uh, and the rightful favorites in this game. Uh, they did beat Charleston Southern twice. One of those games, though, was only by six, you know, at Charleston Southern. And, you know, we've seen it, too, with these higher seeds. It's just it's not easy to win these games comfortably uh, in the very first uh, game. I wouldn't feel comfortable laying double digits here with uh, Asheville uh, here in this spot. And, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to put Charleston on Southern on my card. Do I expect them to win the game? Uh, I probably I don't think they will. But I mean, you're talking 13 and a half. There's some pressure on Asheville to get back, you know, to the NCAA tournament again this year. And to me, this Asheville team, while still very formidable, I'm not sure they're quite as good as they were last year. And yet I think they're kind of being priced in this game like they are that really, really good Asheville team of a year ago. They're still very capable. But to me, just a few too many points here uh, in this game. And like I say, I try to always make a case for a double-digit dog in a neutral court conference tournament environment, and I think there's something here with uh, Charleston Southern. Actually, if you go back and look last year, this year, they've been pretty good in this uh, double-digit dog type of point spread range. So for me, let's go with Charleston Southern here, plus uh, 12.5, plus 100 at ProLine Plus. Charleston, Charleston Southern plus 12.5. What was the juice? Uh, actually, plus 100. Plus 100. No big there. Charleston Southern plus 12 and a half at even money. Mikey Money. Uh, the name of this play of the day is your grandma is wearing your sister's panties again. Play of the day. Citadel plus four. Citadel plus four for Mikey Money. All right. right, let's. So those are all of the early conference games. The rest of the conference game starts 7 p.m. or later. But we do have one more game that starts at 6 p.m. So let's get into that one. And we head to the MAC for that one. Uh, Akron, losers of two of their last three, uh, heading to Kalamazoo, Michigan, to face the Western Michigan Broncos. Uh, Akron, 21-9, and 13-4 in conference. Western Michigan, 11-19, and 8-9 and nine in conference. Western Michigan's lost two of three. Akron has lost two of three as well. Uh, Western Michigan lost to Bowling Green last out. And the lone time these teams played, Akron beat Western Michigan 77-66 at home. It was a very comfortable victory for the Zips. Actually, it wasn't. Sorry, I take that back. Sorry. Uh, they dominated the second half. Western Michigan was actually ahead after the first half. Akron was 14.5 point favorites, and Western Michigan did cover that one. Let's take a look at the line history here. From a total side of things, this is sitting at 139.5. It opened up at 138.5. We have one point move to the over. From a spread perspective here, we have this sitting at 8.5, which is exactly where it opened, minus 8.5. Then cash flow-wise, we have oh, – sorry, blew past that one. We have no help and no information from the board. Take it away for us here, Bobano. Akron, Western Michigan. Yeah, Akron off a stunning loss, and I mean stunning. At home, 22-point favorites against Eastern Michigan. You lose on a buzzer beater, 61-60. I, 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 no one saw that coming. If you, whoever had Eastern Michigan a money line, I don't know if anyone did, but uh, I, I don't even know if anyone would have. I mean, <laughs> that was a, a stunning performance uh, for Akron losing that game. You know, they've had some duds lately on the road. You know, you look at uh, uh, Toledo, Ohio. But those were a lot better teams than Western Michigan. I, I definitely lean Akron, you know, and I don't love laying road chalk very often, but I lean Akron here. This feels like a spot where, you know, after getting humbled at home by a lowly Eastern Michigan team as 22-point favorites, you know, that you're going to see them bounce back and have a strong, focused 40-minute effort. They are still a pretty good basketball team, Akron. But I don't know if I'll lay the points. I lean that way, but as of now, it's a pass. All right, we have a pass there. I am 
On the board, though, I am on William and Mary first half minus three and a half at minus one ten at bet three sixty five. Interestingly enough, that was minus one nineteen at Pinnacle. Uh, both books have moved that full game to seven now. And then I'm on Longwood. I'm on Longwood uh, on the money line here. So let's get Longwood a one point victory, and then both Bobano and I can score. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Mikey Money says green and gold. Jimmy, I like it. So William and Mary first half minus three and a half, and minus one ten, and then Longwood money line at minus one fifteen. Let's roll on uh, Philly Eagle Flyer getting that cash in soccer. Keep an eye out for his soccer action. We've concluded all seven p.m. games, and now we head to the A ten for the next spot on the board. VCU Rams nineteen and 11, 11 and six in conference at the number twenty five ranked Dayton Flyers twenty three and six thirteen and four in conference. We're at UD Arena in Dayton. Ohio. We have VCU losers of two straight. Pretty lug, ugly loss at home to Duquesne last out. 69-59. That was on Tuesday. On Tuesday, Dayton beat up on St. Louis. We were wondering if it was a look-ahead spot. No, they were angry about the loss at Loyola. They took it out on St. Louis, put up triple digits in the victory. So let's see uh, if these teams have met their third and fourth in conference in the A-10. And, yes, they played. VCU beat Dayton. We remember this game, 49-47. It was on a Friday. We capped this game. Very, very low-scoring game. Uh, I remember it. It was uh, Lunar New Year. It was Chinese New Year. I remember drinking Henny and live betting the over and losing it. Here we go. VCU Dayton. Let's get into the line history here for this one. Uh, Dayton right now sitting at minus eight at minus 115. Opened up at minus nine. So we have a one point move towards VCU. Then we have... Uh, on the total sitting at 136 this opened up at 139 we have a three point move to the under and then cash flow wise we have 69 percent of tickets and 81 percent of cash on dayton interesting 88 percent of tickets on the under no cash help it's a lot of money on dayton for the line to move a point towards vcu is this explainable is is the dog does the dog interest you at all bobano take it away vcu dayton I don't know if either of these teams interest me in this spot. Um, it's revenge for Dayton, remember. They lost 49-47 at BCU uh, last month. Home finale for them uh, here tonight. Um, UD Arena, the place should be off the charts. They're going to be, and look, Dayton does have a strong home court, 14. I'm not going against them. With revenge at home, final game of the regular season at home, a VCU team that beats you in a heartbreaker. I mean, this has a Dayton spot screaming all over it, but you're not laying a bargain here with Dayton. You know, you're laying, you know, seven, seven and a half here, uh, eight and a half now with the uh, Flyers. Uh, it's gone up a little bit. Um, and VCU's off a loss as well. You know, the two losses in a row at Richmond and against Duquesne. You know, I do expect VCU to compete here. And it is worth noting that uh, last year at Dayton, it, VCU actually won outright as a dog, 63-62. And Dayton's only victory in the last four meetings was by four points. Not enough to cover this number. So I don't want to fade Dayton in this spot, but I also don't feel totally comfortable laying this many with them. So another pass. Huh. This is set up for me to back VCU, but the revenge factor Dayton playing... Arena. 14 and 0 at home. This team beat them in a heartbreaker. The place will be jumping on a Friday. Yeah, I get it. It's tough. Tough game. And I get I get the concern here. VCU yeah. off yeah, to be straight. They, they have not been trustworthy on the road at all. Yeah. Okay. I'll let go of it. I'll let go of it because of the uh Rabenga in play here and lots of spots on Most of my action is conference tournaments today. I haven't done as a ton with the regular season card tonight. Oh, it's all good, man, because we got lots of those games coming up here and you break them all down beautifully. So the information you give is very helpful for all of us gamblers. We roll on. We head back to the MVC here for this one. Quarters. Evansville Purple Aces, 16 and 16, 6 and 14 in conference at Drake Bulldogs, 25 and 6, 16 and 4 in conference, Enterprise Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Every time I see the Purple Aces, I think of the Purple People Eaters. They were a gang when I was younger. If you went to Metro Town wearing Purple Filas, you got robbed and beaten. 
That's what they were known for. They were looking, they were out looking for anyone wearing purple filas. I was not wearing purple filas, so I was safe. The purple people eaters of Evansville facing Drake in the quarters here. Let's take a look at the situation that we are dealing with. Uh, Evansville, uh, Evansville has played in the tournament, right? We watched them yesterday. Uh, they won over uh, Illinois State. Uh, they beat them 59-53 in a low-scoring affair. The Drake Bulldogs have won two straight. They bounced back from that loss to Northern Iowa. They won in a triple overtime thriller at UIC. And then they beat Bradley 74-66 to close out the season. Let's take a look at what happened. What's good? Jason Zucker from Arizona to Nashville. For Nashville. Nashville. Nashville could Nashville's making a huge run right now, and they could use another score. Interesting. That's a great one. Thank you for that. Uh, so these teams have met. And you guys might remember the debacle for Evansville at Drake. They lost 97 to 48 on January 20th. And then they barely lost by three at home, 78 75. Now, Evansville was in the throes of a seven game losing streak, beating Illinois State, snapped that losing streak. Question is can they carry it over against a team that embarrassed them badly? The Purple Aces. At the Bulldogs. Let's take a look at the line history here for this one. We will start with the spread from a spread scenario. Evansville is 13 and a half point dogs, sort of 14 and a half point do or 14. Uh, the 13 and a half for Evansville is at plus 105. Actually, I just moved to plus 102 six minutes ago. Then from a total standpoint here, we have a 142. Uh, this opened up at 148 and a half. Wow, this is a fall. We have a six and a half point move towards the under. Just a monstrous move there. Let's get into the cash flow for this one. Uh, Evansville has 24% of the tickets and 35% of the cash. Interesting. 94% of the tickets and 98% cash on the under. And the market has adjusted briskly. Uh, Big O says Drake smash spot here. Take it away for us, MVC in action, Evansville, Drake, Bobano. I think Drake probably crushes this team tonight, quite honestly, but I don't know if I want to lay 13 and a half. My rule is don't lay double digits in a conference tournament, and I don't think I'm going to, but if, man, if there ever was a spot I would, I think it would be Drake. Evansville off the uh, you know hard-fought game against Illinois State last night. Credit to them for winning. This is... Still, to me, a pretty bad team and a pretty big mismatch between these two teams. They have the best player on the court by far, Drake, and Tucker DeVries, who's an outstanding player, outstanding scorer. I think it's just too much to ask for Evansville. Um, but uh, this is a lot of points. You know, Drake's got to win, and they got to win by 14-plus on a neutral. But uh, I think Evansville, after that, they got their win yesterday against Illinois State. Their defense still, uh, when they played, you know, Drake and Indiana State and some of these teams, this this defense just got absolutely shredded. And I worry that could happen to them here against the Bulldogs. So Drake or pass, but for now it's a pass. Uh, not really breaking news, but the Devils retain 50% of Toffoli's salary in that deal uh, as well. So there's more wow. uh, tidbits for wow. you. How did Shevel Day off pull this off? Wow. How did he get 50% salary retention out of the Devils for this? Yep. Wow. And uh, this happened earlier, right as the show started, but uh, Kuznets off to Carolina. So, yeah. There. Thank you, Coin. Yeah. I, I think that uh, Svechnikov obviously was asking for him. Uh, and I don't know, these guys, I, I don't know what to say about Kuznetsov. I mean, he's got busted for below you know a few years back and then went to the player pro uh, player program this year and certainly has a ton of skill uh whether or not he can be trusted off the ice i guess is the bigger issue uh but i hope he can and and uh, carolina you add gensel and kuznetsov i mean 
and Brendan Moore is the right guy for the job. All right, let's roll on. We head to the Mac now. So get your Mac glasses on four straight games in the Mac. Let's go. 7 p.m. Eastern, Ohio Bobcats, 18 and 12, 12 and 5 in conference at the Miami of Ohio Redhawks, 15 and 15, 9 and 8 in conference. We're at Millet Hall in Oxford, Ohio. Miami of Ohio's three game winning streak snapped in an ugly loss at home against Toledo, 97 63. This has got to be a spot where they can bounce back, but they're going to have to bounce back against a good Bobcat squad in the throes of a winning streak of their own. That was a just a horrific loss, and I'm sure Bobano will touch on it. Uh, Ohio, the Bobcats have won five straight. They beat Miami of Ohio at home 78-69 in the lone meeting this year. Uh, let's get into the line history here. We have Kelly McKinnis saying Ohio smashes Ohio opened up Miami of Ohio. Look at Ohio opened up at minus two. They're now minus four. A two point move uh, towards them. From a total side of things, uh, this opened up at 143 and a half. Uh, it's now at 144 and a half. A one point move to the over. And then when we get to the cash flow for this one, come on, show your. Okay, here we go. Sorry, I just blew past it. We have 91% of the tickets and 93% of the cash. On Ohio. Now we're only talking about 509 tickets, but at least the market is moving in the direction that the gamblers are are betting. Uh, we have no information on the total. Take it away for us here, Bobano. Bobcats, Red Hawks. Yeah, it feels cheap for Ohio. It really does uh, in this game uh, as far as the number. They're a better team than Miami O. Um, but Miami O has won three of the last four. Uh, I can't say any of the games were great wins. Uh, maybe at Bowling Green, but Eastern Michigan's bad. Central Michigan's bad. They got blown out by Toledo by 34 in the last game. Ohio is rolling along five straight wins, uh, four and one against the spread going into uh, this matchup. You know, Miami O did beat them here on this floor last year, though, 85 68. Other than that, eight and one for Ohio, uh, and eight and one, uh, eight and one straight up, seven and two against the spread for Ohio in the last nine meetings. So it really has been a lopsided series history in favor of Ohio, except for last year when Miami O beat them in, on this floor, 85-68. Um, no bet, but I lean Ohio here. Pass, though. We are moving on to the next spot on the board, but a special Saturday pig milk parlay. <laughs> It's UFC. It's going to be counting towards his record. And uh, we've all been following the glory of the pig milk play of the day. Now 10 and 1. And it's Moros, Blades, and St. Denis at plus 282 for sweet, sweet pig milk. Okay, we roll on. We stay in the MAC. Next up for us is the Ball State Cardinals, 15 and 15, 7 and 10 in conference at the Bowling Green Falcons, 18 and 12, 9 and 8 in conference, Bowling Green, Ohio for this one. Let's get into the situation here. A Ball State coming off a 76 69 home victory over Kent State. They've won two of their last three. Uh, their loss was an overtime at home to Western Michigan. Western Michigan is who Bowling Green just beat, 73 65 on Tuesday. Both teams played on Tuesday. So now let's take a look at what happened on the first meeting between Ball State and Bowling Green. Uh, Ball State lost at home to Bowling Green 81 to 72 on Tuesday, January 30th. So this is the angle that Mikey Money's been attacking so often. Can Ball State exact revenge in this spot? Ball State opened up at plus four and a half. Uh, they got up to five and a half, but they're at five right now. So we have a half point move towards Bowling Green. Then from a the total side of things, this opened up at 142. It's now at 142 and a half, just a half point move towards the over. And when we get to the cash flow, we have, I thought I had it right here. Yes, we do. We have 39% of the tickets and 74% of the cash on Ball State. 50-50 on the ticket count, but 89% cash on the under. Take it away here for us, Ball State, Bowling Green. Yeah, Bowling Green is, uh, you know, the, off a win against Western Michigan. Uh, they had lost two before that. They beat Toledo at home, 76-68. And, uh, you know, the home court's 11-4 and four for Bowling Green, but laying points with them as opposed to taking points with them, not exactly as appealing a uh, a proposition. That being said, you know, uh, Bowling Green's 4-1 four, four ATS, their last five, they're 
playing probably some of their best basketball later in the season here down the stretch. Ball State's kind of been up and down. And one thing about Ball State is they have not put two good performances together. They have not won back-to-back games since um, December or January, I believe. Yeah, you got to go long back in the schedule with Ball State to see the last time they won two in a row. Yeah, January 23rd and 27th is the last time. The last uh, three times they've been off a win, four times they've been off a win, 0-4 the very next game, uh, both straight up in ATS. So I would lean to the Bowling Green side here, but at this number, I don't feel comfortable. Bowling Green's a take points team with uh, for me. Take points with team for me, not lay points with team for me. So pass. I am interested with coin in Ball State here. To exact revenge, Bowling Green feeling good about themselves. The, un- the concern, obviously, DC Capper on the other side, as well as you know, you're talking about Ball State not being able to put two games in a row together. Maybe end of the year and trying to exact Rebenga. I'm interested in Ball State at this number, plus five. I've got asterisks beside it. I expect to bet it. Again, I'm not betting it during the show, and when the show's over, I'll have a little bit more information from the marketplace, but Ball State Cardinals, I expect to make my card. We stay in the MAC for the next spot. Northern Illinois Huskies, 10-20, and 20, just 4-13 and 13 in conference at the Buffalo Bulls, 4-26, and 2-15 and 15 in conference. We're in Buffalo, New York, here at Alumni Arena. These teams have been losing, obviously. Buffalo's lost four straight. Uh, you know, they've lost 15 of 17 conference games and they lost to the Bobcats 78 66 at home. This is their third straight home game. Uh, they played last Saturday losing to Toledo. They look good now on 85 79, you know, and they didn't look awful against Ohio losing 78 66, but here they are at home yet again. Uh, Northern Illinois only has the one win in their last five that was at Toledo. Uh, you know, what two weeks ago, uh, their last game was at home for Central Michigan. They lost 69 to 63. So, can the Bulls get their third victory? Uh, Northern Illinois won at home over Buffalo in a very tight game 72 68 back on February 13. Uh, wow, Kelly McKinnon says, uh, Radford and High Point now tied. How much time is left, Kelly? Trying not to focus it's on like it. four minutes and change left in the first oh, half. Oh wow! Look yeah, at that. You know they're going to go on a run. They're a great team. Yeah, they're yeah, but I. <laughs> oh no, I know that. I just um, I want the Radford backers to get paid. We had a lot more Radford backers than High Point, so uh, I've I've let go of the situation for me. But let's come back to this spot here for Bobano uh, in the MAC. Let's see what we are dealing with here for Northern Illinois Buffalo. We have. Uh, no information, 331 tickets in. And you got to be a DJ to want to bet this game, and that's who we are. Take it away, Bobano. Huskies, Bulls. Yeah, it's ugly. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, these are two. And Buffalo, remember, used to be one of the good teams in the MAC. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, not this year, 4 and 26. Uh, absolutely an awful season for them. Um, yeah, they're, 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 they've lost four. And they have covered two of them, though. So you have to be careful. I mean, they're, they're obviously the power rating for. Uh, Buffalo has dropped like a stone here. That being said, do I want them in a pick and price range? I don't know. I don't think I do. For a team that's won four in a row, they're asking them to win the game. Now, I know it is a home game uh, for them. Northern Illinois is four and 11 straight up uh, on the road. But Northern Illinois has four road wins. Buffalo's got four wins. As in overall, they have four wins. So it's not like the home court is trustworthy by itself, you know, to back Buffalo here. Uh, in this spot, but Northern Illinois on the road, you know, they've dropped three of their last four. Uh, I would lean over here. I don't expect, you know, a ton of defense to be played. Uh, the total is one. Yeah, I think I, I think I will add the over here. I, this is the, this is the bet that I had in mind. You know, neither team's great defensively. Northern Illinois uh, is a team that, uh, you know, can push pace Buffalo. We know on their worst day, uh, can't get very many stops at that end of the court. I think you can make a case for points in this game. Uh, over 148.5, minus 120 at uh, Pro Line Plus. Over, sorry, here we go. Over 148.5 at minus 120 over at Pro Line Plus. Oh, we roll on. Next up. Final spot in the MAC before we get into more conference championships. We'll have four straight conference championships right after this because we head to the 7.30 and then 8 o'clock hour. Eastern Michigan Eagles, 13 and 17, 6 and 11 in the MAC at the Central Michigan Chippewa, 17, 13, 11, 6 in the MAC. We're at Mount Pleasant, Michigan for 
this one. Uh, Eastern Michigan uh, playing much better. They've won three of four. They're moving in the right direction. Now they had a debacle at home versus Miami of Ohio when they scored 37 points, but they are playing better. Uh, winners of three of their last four went into Akron and just beat them 61 60 was a giant wake up call there on Tuesday. Then central Michigan snapped their three game losing streak, defeating Northern Illinois 69 to 63. So the next question is what's happened when these teams met and what happened was uh, Eastern Michigan lost badly at home to central Michigan. They lost by 16. This is an improving squad. Uh, they've won four of six. Uh, what have they done on the road? They went to Ball State and beat them, and then they went to Akron and beat them. This is a, an improving squad. Let's take a look at the line history here for this one. Eastern Michigan opened up at plus 10.5. They're down to plus 8 at Bet Online. Two and a half point move towards Eastern Michigan. From a total standpoint, oh, I got Ball State still up there. Sorry, from a total standpoint, uh, this opened up at 129. It's at 129 minus 115, so a five cent move towards the under. And then cash flow you have 80% of the tickets and 94% of the cash on Eastern Michigan. 50 50 ticket count on the total and no cash information. Wow, 80% and 94. Maybe now at least the market is moving in that direction. There's my guy AOD in the house. Take it away for us, Bobano. Eagles, chips. I mean, uh, Eastern Michigan coming off the win of their season, probably a 22-point dog beating Akron uh, on the road. This is not going to be, I don't think, some kind of like lightning bolt win and it's going to transform their season. I mean, I just, I just don't trust a team that's been as bad as Eastern Michigan has, even after a shocking win like that against Akron on the road, to follow it up here. But I'm not laying this many with Central. I just it's way too many points for me to trust with the Chippewas, who are not that great themselves. This is an easy stay away for me. Yeah, perfectly put. Uh, do you uh, uh, snap me right into it? Like, do you want Eastern Michigan after a season-defining victory? Do you want any team in college after a season-defining victory? We know the answer to that, especially when they're not that good to begin with. Yeah, oh, you, yeah. you nailed it. Now, do you want the other side? Yeah. Uh, and second straight road game too for EMU. I'd actually lay the points if I had to but not nine with the CMU. I love these. What do we got? It's just the, the full Toffoli trade okay. was uh, Toffoli to Winnipeg for a second and a third. A oh, okay. That's 25 and a, a third and 24. All right. Wow. They gave up some draft capital, but they also got yeah. 50% New Jersey to keep it. So. That's, uh, well, you know, that now that makes more sense, second and a third. But, right. wow, impressive work, as you said. Okay, let's roll on. We go back to conference championship action, 7.30 p.m., SoCon championship first round. The VMI cadets, who've been terrible this year, 4-27 and overall, 1-17 and in conference at East Tennessee State. Buccaneers, 16-15, and 8-10 and in conference. We're at Harris Cherokee Center in Asheville, North Carolina for this one. Let's set the table here for Bobano, SoCan Championship Round 1. We have, of course, BMI in the throes of a massive losing streak. East Tennessee State's won three of their last four, and they won at home over UNC Greensboro, who is tied for second with Chattanooga in the South Southern Conference standings. And they went and they beat them. They're playing pretty good basketball here. Let's take a look at what's happened when the cadets have played against East Tennessee State. They faced East Tennessee State twice at home after beating Citadel. You know, one of their very that, that's their only conference victory season. They almost beat East Tennessee State. They lost 74-73 at home. Well, that, you know, showed East Tennessee State that they're not a pushover. They traveled to East Tennessee State on February 21st, and it was an 82-69 victory for East Tennessee State. So VMI has played East Tennessee State really hard. I mean, East Tennessee State was 19 and a half point favorites at Freedom Hall and lost. Oh, sorry, and won by 13, but didn't cover. So VMI has played these guys tough. Uh, best bet is in here. Best bet is in here for BJ uh, Cavaliers Moneyline. Uh, thank you for sharing that with us, my man. I will copy and paste that. Also, look at my guy Fat Wally's NASCAR action. Shriners 500 in Phoenix. Blaney plus 650. Reddick plus 1400. And a half unit on Barry at 80 to 1 from our guy Fat Wally. Love you, Wally. Okay, so let's take a look at the line history here for the SoCan Championship 
We have the spread sitting at 17 and a half, opened up at 15, a two and a half point move towards East Tennessee State. Then from a total side of things, we are sitting here with a 147 and a half. This opened up at 146, a point and a half move towards the over. And then when we get to the cash flow for this spot, we have, oh, sorry, here we go. We have 50 50, but 83% of the cash on East Tennessee State, 80% of ticket, 76% cash on the under. Take it away for us here. SoCon Championship first round, floor is yours. I, I definitely like the over in this game. I'm a little hesitant on the side. I mean, um, East Tennessee State is another team I think could do some damage in this tournament, but they have kind of struggled. And I don't know if it's struggled or they've kind of gone through the motions against BMI, but there's definitely enough on the bone as far as series history, enough meat on the bone to say, you know what, can't lay this many. And I never lay this many on a conference tournament game. You will not see me laying 16 and a half, 17 and a half actually now uh, with uh, East Tennessee State uh, in this game. But I do like the over. Uh, VMI is a team that is just deep. They're defensively challenged. I mean, they gave up a uh, hundred to Greensboro, 84 to Western Carolina. I mean, they gave up high seventies, eighties at minimum, you know, in the majority of their games, uh, they've kind of, uh, uh, trended over down the stretch as well. I think when you look at this situation, um, you know, I think we'll see points. It's worth noting head to head. We saw 151 in the, in, in the most recent meeting, uh, and it went over the total first meeting at 147. And, of course, that's right around where this total is. But to me, total's just a little bit light here for uh, the deficiencies we see with VMI. VMI can score, though. The key debts have a bit of a funky offensive system, and they can sometimes take teams aback by it. They're definitely better at that end of the court than they are on defense. So uh, I'm, I think I'm going to lay off the side, but I'm going to go with over 146.5 minus 115 uh, at FanDuel. Over 146 and a half at minus 115 and a big um, late run at the end of the first half by Radford and they cover and they win outright the first half. Yeah, first half money line on Radford. Yeah. yeah, you just won. Wow. Great job for all of you guys rolling on Radford first half. Excellent work. I wish I had have joined you. Let's roll on. Uh, next up for us, we head to the Ohio Valley Conference Championship semis here. The old, ye old Leathernecks trying to get into the tourney. Western Illinois Leathernecks took out Tennessee State. Now, Mikey Money did cover Tennessee State because uh, it was plus three situation there, so we did get the cash, but I uh, and I didn't move on Tennessee State in the end. Western Illinois, 61-59 victory. Winners of four straight games and playing good basketball. The issue is Little Rock playing very good basketball themselves, 14-4 and four over the last 18. Uh, there's Perky uh, in the house. And Christopher Tatum played Jimmy's Waffle. <laughs> my, my Waffle play today is 1-0. Uh, so these teams uh, met one time this year. They met at Western Illinois and Little Rock won that game. Uh, that was game three of what is now a nine-game winning streak for Little Rock. Does Western Illinois have an answer? I did I did acknowledge it, Justin. I did acknowledge it. I, uh, I'm sure that Jose's building the thumbnail now, unfortunately. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's take a look at the line history for this spot. Sitting right now at six, Arkansas Little Rock minus six. This opened up at four. It came out at 154 in the morning at Bet Online. Ten minutes later, this had moved a full point and a half. Now it did come back a point, but that's a pretty big initial move, and it's continued that way. So Little Rock at minus six, despite the Rabenga that is in play. From a total side of things here, we have a 135 and a half. This opened up at 133, a two and a half point move to the over. And then cash flow wise, we have no information. 458 tickets in. Take it away for us here, Bobano, Leathernecks, Trojans. Oh, I'm on Western Illinois here. I think they're live in this tournament. I have a future on them as well, but you're going to give me six points with the uh, Leathernecks of Western Illinois. Uh, I'm taking it. Uh, look, Little Rock, uh, it's been a really good season for them. Uh, they've played great uh, basketball. Uh, make no mistake about it, but this is conference tournament time, and this is a surging Western Illinois team that won uh, six of their last seven games down the stretch. The only loss was to Moorhead State, one of the top teams here in the uh, Ohio Valley. Um, I like what they're doing. I like that their defense has improved. They've had some awful defensive teams in the past, not this year. It's been a much improved defensive team. 
Uh, they've held three straight opponents to 66 points or fewer, uh, which has been significant for them uh, going into uh, this game. And that's the uh, funny part. C coin, great point. If they could just shore up the free throw shooting, which, you know, they won yesterday against, uh, <laughs> uh, they won their uh, first game of the tournament yesterday against uh, Tennessee State, 61-59 in spite of some wretched uh, free throw shooting. You know, I think they can definitely improve at that uh, department. The problem is they aren't a great free throw shooting team. Uh, Sixty-one percent overall, and it's the only flaw that's coming into this game for me is that Little Rock is not only better but much better, you know, at the free throw line than Western Illinois. But I like the way they're defending right now. Uh, it's a Little Rock team that, uh, like I said, they've, they've they've actually been sub not subpar, but they've been beatable on the road, you know. And if you look at the uh, series history this year, they played just once. It was sixty-three to sixty for Little Rock. Uh, against Western Illinois back in February, a very close competitive game. It's just too many points. I, th I think you're giving Western Illinois uh, not enough respect at this number. Maybe Little Rock a little too much respect with where this number is. So for me here, uh, we will lock in Western Illinois plus six, minus 104 at Pinnacle. You. Big. Turner Ellison going to the, to the Minnesota Wild for Nick Petrin of the Rangers. <laughs> All right, let's get back. To Are you sure that's not Nick Patin? Nick Patin? Uh, it Nick is Petrin? Nick Patin. It might be, yeah. Okay, yeah. Nick Patin. It's one of my favorites. Nick Patin. All Here right. Uh, monster moves deadline information from Jose Sweet tea tits bouquet, but keep them coming, sweet tea tits. Big South Championship quarterfinal next up. The Presbyterian Blue Hose, H O E S, 14, 17, 6 and 10 in the Big South at the Gardner Webb running Bulldogs, 16 and 15, 11 and 5 in the Big South. We're back, High Point, North Carolina for this one. Presbyterian, who were, you know, just 6 and 10 in conference, won two of their last three. Now, you know, those wins came, well, they beat Winthrop on the road and dominated them in that one. That was a wildly interesting spot. 78 to 55. Uh, won two of their last three Gardner Webb looking nice, uh, running nice, uh, three wins in a row and impressive ones as well. Let's take a look at what's happened once, uh, when these teams have met up this year, uh, we've seen a uh, Presbyterian has seen Gardner Webb twice this year. The first time was at Gardner Webb. They lost by 16, lost badly. Then they came home and beat them by two. Just got past Gardner Webb, beating them 77 to 75. Let's take a look at the line history then for this one. We have on the total, it opened up at 146. It's all the way down to 143 and a half on the spread. This opened up with Gardner Webb minus six. They're right back where they started at six. It did get to six and a half for a little bit, but it's right back at six. So no movement. And then cash flow wise, 75% of the tickets and 97% of the cash is on Presbyterian. This line is not moving. You know, I like this spot for Gardner Webb, the way it's set up here, because they dominated a team that they're better than. Then they came back and got a real scare from Presbyterian. Uh, you know, so they're not going to take Presbyterian lightly. And all the money's on Presbyterian and the line's not moving. Take it away, Bobano. Do you have interest in, do you have interest in these running Bulldogs? I do, but not at minus six. I think they win this game. This is another team I've got a small flyer on in the conference, uh, Gardner Webb. I like uh I, I like the way they played down the stretch. Um, I think they win this game. I think they advance. It's just this is if it was maybe a point or two or three lower than it is, I'd probably be in on it on Gardner Webb. Uh, it is worth noting they split the season series. Gardner Webb won handily in the first meeting, 76 60. Presbyterian got them back on their home floor, 77 75 on February the 7th. But I like the way Gardner's playing. They upset Asheville, one of the top teams in the conference. They beat Longwood, another one of the good teams in the conference. And then they went to Winthrop. Winthrop's final home game, senior night, and they won outright 65-64. I mean, Gardner-Webb is rolling right now. There's no way I'm stepping in front of these guys. Presbyterian, uh, the one thing, though, the Presbyterian's been good in is the underdog role. And the, so that's why I'm a little leery laying this many against them. 
you know, high point they covered as 18 and a half point dogs. They beat Gardner Webb, of course, outright as dogs the previous meeting. They beat Radford as underdogs. They lost by two at Asheville as 10 and a half point dogs. They uh, went one, one at Winthrop as nine point dogs outright. Two point dogs at South Carolina Upstate, they push. They've been very good catching points, Presbyterian. So that's my only concern here. But I think Gardner Webb's the better of these two teams. I do think they win. I just don't want to lay quite this many points. I'll just cheer on the future that I have on them. Yeah, and you're not the only one. We have a couple of cappers in the chat with futures on Gardner Webb. I, I like this. I'd like uh, Mikey Money saying the wrong team is favored. I'd, I've asked him to expand on that uh, for us. But from a market standpoint, you know, three quarters of the tickets and all the money on Presbyterian and the well, line. Not... Presbyterian should be favored in the game. Uh, and that's this the. Game? Whoa. I'd be uh, yeah. interested to hear that too. <laughs> yes. So we're going to get the expansion on that. DC Capra moving on San Diego State. We're going to talk about that one. But because of all that money on Gardner, the, the first move was towards Gardner Webb, a half point with all this. So I, I'm interested in Gardner Webb. Uh, I'm comfortable with six. I'd prefer five, obviously, you know, uh, but I, I think that we can work with six. So I'd like to hear what Mikey, I'm sure he's writing it out right now. Let's move on. Summit League Championship first round, South Dakota Coyotes, 12 and 19, 5 and 11 in the summit at the Oral Roberts uh, Golden Eagles. Oral Roberts Golden Eagles. And look at that. A gambling monitoring service, and we know whose services that is. Uh, flag Thursday's game, Temple UAB, because of unusual wagering activity. Uh, we know what the activity was. Enormous amounts of money were bet on UAB. Um, like that went from one and a half to seven, seven and a half. Like that's yeah. a six point move. And sure enough, UAB won 100 to 75. Like they won by 25 points. That's fishy as hell. It is. I don't want to say, you know, throwing the game and, and point shaving and all that, but man, it's got, it smells and it feels and it kind of looks like it. It really does. It really does. It really and does. It's the second time it's happened in, I believe, a Temple game. Yeah. yeah. Very, very interesting. All right, let's roll on to this spot. These are not the Oral Roberts. That's, and that's not good for us. It makes us look bad as an industry. You know, that this we, we want to get rid of this shit from happening if that's if it indeed is true. Yeah, but let's, I mean, we know who we are. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah. South Dakota Coyotes, Oral Roberts, Golden Eagles. Uh, South Dakota Coyotes had a two-game winning streak snapped, snapped against North Dakota, tied for second in the conference. Uh, so it's not a terrible loss considering how good North Dakota is, but they lost 95 to 66. So it's pretty, pretty ugly. Uh, Oral Roberts on the throws of a massive losing streak, not playing good basketball at all. So we have the one team, the Coyotes, with a slap in the face, wake-up call. You have Oral Roberts, who just went to South Dakota and almost beat them, lost 77 to 76. And Oral Roberts beat them the first time they played. Uh, Oral Roberts took care of South Dakota, 84 to 66, dominated them. So... Wow, uh, a very interesting situation here where uh, the weak, weak Oral Roberts team that's lost seven straight is, has been very good against this South Dakota squad this year. Let's pull up, and uh, Michael Buelna says uh, South Dakota and whatever points at tip Oral Roberts. Oral Bob says stinks this year. Uh, Billy Fraser says Oral Roberts going to take this one down the gullet. Interesting. Well, let's take a look at the line history for this Oral Roberts spot. We have... It's sitting the total sitting at 152. It opened up at 155, so a three point move to the under. Then, on a spread perspective, we are sitting here with Oral Roberts minus five, I opened up at minus three and a half. So, we have a one and a half point move uh, towards uh, Oral Roberts, a very interesting one. So, uh, then from a total or sorry, from a cash flow side of things, we have. 66% of the tickets, 62% of the cash on Oral Roberts, and the line's moving in their direction. Only 484 tickets in and no information on the total. Take it away for us. Bobano, Summit League, baby, first round. Yeah, I, I have nothing here. I mean, Oral Roberts, I'm not laying points with a team like this on a uh, six-game, seven-game losing streak. But again, this is a team with the culture in this conference and the history and the tradition of you know doing big things in the conference tournament. And sometimes you see this. Teams that you know down the stretch can't get it done playing bad basketball but they've got a history of success and oral roberts does have that here in the summit league they can flip a switch and get it going and i just don't trust south dakota enough south dakota you know they got bombed in their last game uh they did have obviously the win against north dakota state 
Um, but you know, I'm not so sure I fully, uh, I'm on board with trusting them. You are getting a good amount of points with them. I would certainly lean to the dog, but not enough to pull the trigger on it. I'm going to stay off this one. Let's roll on. That concludes the 8 p.m. conference tournaments. We have one more game at 8 p.m., and it is a MAC spot. Let's discuss it. The Kent State Golden Flash is 15 and 15, 8 and 9 in conference at the Toledo Rockets, 19 and 11, 13 and 4 in conference. Also, uh, Mikey Money with that Presbyterian talk says, uh, Presbyterian averaging more points, better shooters, better shooting chances, and better foul line. Marginal, but still relevant. And you're laying six. He says Barnett plays this line, drops to three or four, in his opinion. All right. Do we expect Barnett to play at this point? Um, let's Stay get some. Tuned. Yeah. Okay, let's get some information on that. Uh, here we go. Let's talk about this spot here in the MAC. Uh, we got. Kent State on the road versus Toledo. This is the lone 8 p.m. game in the MAC. Last game in the MAC. We've capped them all here. We have right now uh, Kent State coming off that 76 69 loss at Ball State. They've won two straight. They lose uh, at Ball State. Bit of a wake up call. Uh, Toledo got their wake up call, you know, losing at home to Northern Illinois. Then they barely beat Buffalo at Buffalo, and then they destroyed Miami of Ohio. So they're back to probably feeling good about themselves. They're tied atop the conference. So a must-win situation for Toledo. The first time these two teams met was at home uh, for Kent State, and Toledo took care of business 89-75. to So here we go. Uh, Toledo in a must-win situation. This total at 154, opened up at 153.5. And, and then spread-wise, we are sitting here with Toledo at minus 8. Uh, this opened up at minus 7.5. It's bounced to 7. It's bounced to 8. It's bounced all over the place. We're now sitting with a half-point move towards Toledo. And then cash-wise here for this one, we have... 75% of the tickets and 99% of the cash on Kent State at plus eight. Now only 942 tickets in, 93% of the tickets on the over. Here we go. Take it away, Bobano, Kent State, Toledo. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big fan of Kent State this year. Um, I, I don't I don't think I want to back them in this spot. Four and eight on the road. Toledo, strong home court, 11 and three. Uh, Toledo did win handily at Kent, 89-75 in the first meeting. Um We'll see if they uh, if they can take care of business. You know, they lost their last home game against Northern Illinois, but they bounced back with road wins against Buffalo and Miami. Oh, it's still been a pretty good home court overall. Remember, they had a huge home win against Akron. They beat Ohio on this court. Uh, you know, they've had some good wins against good teams. Kent State, you know, I don't think I trust them to travel. If you look coming into this game, uh, they are on an 0-4 straight up, 0-4 against the spread run, 0-3 straight up and 0-3 against the spread in conference play uh, on the road, losing and failing to cover at Ohio, at Akron, losing by 13, at Ball State as favorites in their last game, losing by seven on the road. So I'm definitely Toledo or pass for me. On the fence about whether I'll lay the points, but I lean in that direction. I have interest in Toledo as well in this spot. So I'm going to take a little bit more time on it, but I've got a Toledo listed here with asterisks and question marks interested here a chance to win the conference i mean it just feels like a smash spot it's a lot of points for a reason so we'll keep breaking this one down but let's move on to the next tournament game the west coast conference tournament game we've been talking about it we set it up off the hop uh pepperdine beat pacific 102 43 i was on pacific first half and they went down 33 to 2 so it was a embarrassing uh, just turn the page situation for me. Uh, Pepperdine had, and, and, and I talked about it in the setup. Uh, they played, they lost badly, but they played against the best two teams, not named Gonzaga in the conference. And that, that was going to push them here against the worst team. And it did. Uh, they took care of business here. Uh, San Diego also had their last game against Pacific and looked awful. Uh, barely beat Pacific 81 69 at home. It did snap a three game losing streak. So here we go, San Diego Pepperdine in round two. Uh, these teams faced each other twice this year. Uh, Pepperdine went into San Diego, beat them 83-77. And then San Diego exacted revenge in at Pepperdine, winning by two points. 
Let's take a look at the line history here for this one. We'll start with the total. From a total side of things, this opened up at 152 and a half. It's now at 153. And from a spread side of things, we are sitting right now with San Diego as three point dogs. Uh, they opened up as two and a half point dogs, moved to three, back to two and a half, went down to two this morning. And now we're back. Now it's at three and a half. So we have a one point move towards the waves. Let's take a look at the cash flow. Cash flow wise, we have 67% of the tickets and 69% of the cash on Pepperdine, 67% of the tickets and 90% of cash on the under. Take it away for us here. West Coast Conference Tournament round two, Bobano, waves, Toreros. Yeah, this is uh, obviously this is fascinating because Pepperdine absolutely destroyed Pacific yesterday. And the question is, was Pacific that bad or is Pepperdine, you know, that good and they're capable of making a run? It's a weird dynamic because you thought maybe, you know, with Lorenzo Romar on his way out, you know, coaching change at the end of the season, his team might not bring it here in the conference tournament. But again, how much do you gleam from a win against a team that hasn't won a conference game this year, which Pacific is not. Now you're playing San Diego, who, look, aren't a great team, but they're certainly better. Uh, I could only look San Diego here, flat out. And I know the money's come in on Pepperdine. It's up to three and a half, four. Uh, off a game where they played almost a perfect game against a very, very, very bad team. I'm not laying a premium like that with the Pepperdine waves here in this spot. But I'm on the fence about whether I'm going to back San Diego because I, I think I need this is a live betting look for me. If Pepperdine has it going early, maybe then um, we'll, we will admit that, hey, maybe they got a little something going. But I, I want to see how this game goes here at the start. To me, you're paying a little bit of a tax now on Pepperdine after yesterday. Everyone saw them destroy a, a horrible team. It's not a spot for me for Pepperdine laying points on a back to back rested San Diego team. Lean San Diego. Haven't gotten there, though. And Smoke and Tree on San Diego first half, and Justin McKelvey just moved on San Diego. Let's roll on. Next spot on the board, we have reached the taint play of the day. Matty Ice delivering Tulane minus three and a half. Says Tulane taint today, triple T's in business. Sweet, sweet taint. <laughs> Wichita State has won two straight games and three of four, that lone loss at home to Temple in overtime. Uh, Tulane in the throes of a losing streak. Uh, unfortunately, I backed them in two of those games, uh, unfortunately. So uh, I want money back, and, and I kind of like Tulane. I don't, they're not a bad team. They seem just to fall apart in the last few minutes of these games. Uh, these teams have faced each other, and let me – Pull it up. When was that game against Tulane? What they haven't? It's impossible. Wow. These teams have not faced each other again. So this is the uh, lone meeting here uh, for these two. So there's no Rebenga, none of that in play. Let's take a look at the line history here for this one. We have a Tulane minus three, but it's minus 125. It's really three and a half. Uh, it has moved to three and a half. So sorry, it has moved now to three and a half and it's juiced at three and a half. So we have a one point move with juice included. Then from a total side of things, we're sitting here with a 155 and a half. It opened up at 155. So we have a half point move to the over and then cash flow wise here. We have 60% of the tickets and 92% of cash on Wichita State. All this money on Wichita State and the line keeps moving towards Tulane. What do you think? We're in the Devlin Fieldhouse, a team that's 4-13 and 13 in conference, is the favorite, and the line's moving towards them with all the cash on the Shockers. Do you agree with this look on Tulane, Bobano? Well, if I'm going to back Tulane, I'm going to back them at home uh, because they've certainly been a lot better there uh, this season uh, overall. 2-8 uh, and eight straight up on the road, but 10-6 and six at home. Uh, you look at head-to-head, -head, they have actually not played each other this year. It's uh, the, the first uh, meeting uh, between these two teams. Tulane won uh, two of the meetings last year. Actually, Wichita beat them at Tulane last year. Wichita, you know, to their credit, they've won and covered three of the last four against UAB, a good road win. They beat Rice at home, Tulsa at home, uh, but they did lose to East Carolina. They lost to, it was not very good. Charlotte oh, is very good, but they lost by double digits, and they lost to Tulsa on the road. So the results have been kind of all over the map as far as their 
their road performance uh, is concerned. We'll see how they fare here tonight, but uh, I definitely lean two-lane green wave here uh, in this one. But the numbers climbed a little bit. We are talking about a seven-game losing streak for two lanes, so I'm not sure I'm jumping necessarily at the chance here to back uh, two lane here uh, in this type of uh, situation. Uh, what I might back, though, is the over, uh, and I will back the over in this game. It's an over series history, three straight overs head-to-head. Neither team is great at the defensive end. Both teams are better at the offensive end. So over 154 and a half minus 112 at ProLine Plus for me. Over 154 and a half at minus 112 for Bobano. I like this spot with Tulane, with Matty Ice. I'm interested in joining him here and seeing if I can get paid back or back in the squad. Okay, four games left. Let's get through them here. We head back. To the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament quarterfinal. UIC Flames 12 and 24 and 16 in conference. The Bradley Braves 21 and 10, 13 and 7 in conference. We're at Enterprise Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Set this bad boy up here. Bradley has they had their three game winning streak snapped in a 74 66 loss at Drake. A UIC, you know, took out SIU Edwardsville in double overtime, and it was. Oh, sorry. It was Southern Illinois. My bad. Sorry. Took out the Salukis in overtime, and it was a nice, nice uh, win for them to snap their a losing streak, an important win in double overtime. Can they carry that momentum here into this spot? Let's take a look at what's happened once uh, when these teams faced each other earlier in the year. Uh, we have the first time they met at home, uh, Bradley came to UIC and destroyed them. Uh, Bradley beat them 77 to 59 when they faced each other again it was another very easy win uh, for bradley 85 to 73 so you know this situation worked very well for me uh then it blew up in my face against pacific uh it's worked very well for me though is there's no pressure on uic bradley is expected to beat this team again and beat them handily let's take a look at the line history then for this spot this total is sitting at 136. It opened up at 136 and a half, a half point move to the under. Then from a spread perspective here, a UIC is at plus 12. Uh, they opened up at plus 10 and a half. So we've had a point and a half move towards UIC. And then when we get to the cash flow for this one, we have... 88% of the tickets and 87% of the cash on Bradley line moving in their direction. Take it away for us, Bobano. Is there any interest in dog or favorite here? Interest in favorite, but again, this is just like uh, I think what we talked about with Drake. I just don't know if I want to lay this many points with the Bradley Braves, but it's very difficult for me to trust UIC. A double overtime affair late into the night last night against Southern Illinois, uh, and they escape with the victory. Uh, I'm not sure this is a circumstance where I'm ready to back UIC even getting all these points coming off a game like that. Uh, I think when you look at this spot, um, I could only lay it with Bradley. It's a huge number here, 11, uh, 11 and a half points uh, in this game. But there, uh, I think it's very, very difficult here to trust UIC. I actually think I'm – oh, man, they did. They, they destroyed UIC, too, during the regular season. They won by 12 at home, and then they won by 18 at, at Illinois-Chicago back in uh, January. So lopsided victories for Bradley uh, in both games. Yes, this line has climbed. Uh, I understand, though, why. Uh, it has climbed uh, toward uh, Bradley. Um, but, man, the rule for me, the golden rule, is you will not see me laying double digits in the car. And, and I stand by it. I stand by it. No matter how much uh, I think the spot favors the double-digit favorite, and I do. This is another one where if I'm going to lay a big number today, this would be one of the candidates. But I am going to reluctantly pass. We'll roll on. I'm not going to take the dog in that one. 10 p.m. Eastern. We head to the Mountain West for another clash of very good basketball teams. Boise State Broncos, 21 and 9, 12 and 15 in conference at the number 21 ranked San Diego State Aztecs. Uh, both of these very good teams uh, coming off of losses. I mean, there's a cluster of really strong teams. I mean, you can count, what, seven of them? I mean, seven really strong teams in this conference. Uh, Boise State tied with Nevada and UNLV one game behind the Aggies. So here we go. Boise State had a nice-looking winning streak snapped at home in a loss to Nevada on Tuesday, 76-66. to San Diego State had a two-game winning streak and went into UNLV and lost 62-58. to So both teams smarting off of losses, and both teams very talented. They faced each other once this year, and Boise State, 
beat San Diego State at home, 67 to 66. It was a very tight basketball game. So here we go. Can the Aztecs get revenge on their home floor? And will it be within a number that you want to bet? Because this is a seven and a half point favorite. Opened up at seven, immediately dropped, not immediately, sorry. The first move was towards the under, or sorry, towards Boise State, went to six and a half. And then it got up to eight at three this morning. We're now sitting at a seven and a half in juice. So it's a half point and juice. When we get to the cash, or sorry, when we get to the, uh, Total in this one, we're sitting at 135, opened up at 136 and a half. And then when we get to the cash flow, we have 63% of the tickets and 92% of the cash, just a half point move, but juice included. 74% of tickets on the over, no cash information. Take it away for us here, Bobano, Mountain West action, Boise State, San Diego State. I've taken San Diego State in some of these revenge spots at home, and they've rewarded me. The Colorado State game, the New Mexico game, they won both of those. 16-point and 11-point margin is a victory against the Rams and the Lobos at home in revenge. They've got Boise here in revenge. Boise did have a road win at New Mexico uh, back in January, but and they did beat Air Force and Wyoming in blowout fashion on the road. So Boise can be a capable road team, but again, they also faced the two of the better teams on the road in February uh, Utah State and Colorado State, and they lost both of those by double digits. So I'm going back to the well. Aztecs in revenge at home. They've been good in these spots against the better teams as well in the Mountain West. Uh, Aztecs minus six and a half, minus 132 at ProLine Plus. All right, let's hear it. This one's big. Massive. Joey Votto to the Blue Jays. Wow. Wow. So Non-roster invite with the Blue Jays. I was going to say, didn't he retire? Officially? No, no. Like officially? He, no, he did not. Wow. Uh, wow. All right. Uh, yeah. He did show he had a little something in the tank at times last year still with Cincy, but. He did. He did. I would have preferred fucking Bellinger or uh, someone, oh, one of those other guys, that, but yeah. that were available. But uh, maybe this, you know, uh, we've always wanted to see him in the Blue Jays uniform. I mean, we have that, to wait that part will be, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, I, I, <laughs> I don't want to say something bad, but uh, it's uh, this has not been the off season of our wildest dreams. Let's just no. leave it at that. Let's That's move on to the OVC Championship semifinal, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Moorhead State Eagles, 24 and 8, 14 and 4 in the OVC. At the UT Martin Skyhawks, 21 and 10, also 14 and 4 in the OVC. Ford Center in Evansville, Indiana. Let's take a look at what we are dealing with here. First off, uh, Moorhead State, four straight wins. UT Martin absolutely rolling. One of those victories for UT Martin was at home over Moorhead State, 88 82, was part of this a winning streak for the Skyhawks. Skyhawks are playing great basketball. They've won seven straight and they've won 11 of 12. Uh, that, as I said, that one, one of those wins, 88, 82 at home over Moorhead state, the loss that started this 11 uh, before the 11 out of 12 was their third loss in four games. And it was at Moorhead state and they lost badly 84 to 66. They lost badly. They got some revenge. Did the Skyhawks at home versus Moorhead state. Uh, in the next meeting. So that's where we're sitting at. This total sitting at 147, opened up at 152, a five-point move towards the under. Then from a spread perspective here, we have Tennessee Martin Skyhawks plus eight and a half. That's a big line. Opened up at seven and a half and got bigger. Actually, just dropped back to eight. Uh, so a half-point move towards Moorhead State. And then uh, cash flow-wise, no information for us. Take it away, Bo Banno. Moorhead State, UT Martin. Yeah, I'm on the Skyhawks here, UT Martin. Um, I like this team. I like the way they've uh, played the majority of the season. Uh, I know Moorhead State has been absolutely terrific. UT Martin got them, though, the last time they played each other, 88-82. Uh, and that's when Martin started to really r get going. I mean, they're on fire. They're 7-0 straight up and against the spread coming into this conference tournament in their last seven games. They went on the road. They beat, uh, like I say, they beat Moorhead State. Uh, they've had some good results here, and they pummeled some of the lower teams in the uh, conference. Uh, they beat Western Illinois on the road, who's a very good team in this conference. I mean, they are playing really good basketball right now at the right time, UT Martin. Uh, Moorhead State, 
you know, it was probably one of the teams to beat here in this conference tournament. But you're going to give me with a surging UT Martin side this many points, upwards of eight and a half. I will take it. Uh, so UT Martin plus eight and a half, minus one ten at points bet. UT Martin plus eight and a half at minus one ten. Let's get into the final game. Bobano has broken down twenty five. Of 26 games. Let's lock in this last one. West Coast Conference Tournament, 11.30 p.m. Eastern action. Perfect for a Friday night, baby. Loyola Marymount Lions, 12 and 18, 5 and 11 in conference. The Portland Pilots, 11 and 25 and 11 in conference. Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Who doesn't want to close their action with a bum fight? I don't know the capper. These teams, these teams just met each other. Closing out the regular season, it was a 70-60 victory for the Portland Pilots. It was their second straight win. They won, and they were in control, and then they fell apart at halfway. I mean, uh, this team can just stop scoring. Uh, basically, they didn't score a buck. So 251 left in the first half. They were at 38 points, and then they didn't score another bucket until three minutes into the second half. So they, they go five minutes scoreless, but they still win the game. Only turn the ball over five times, shoot 48.1 from three, 39.3 from, sorry, 48.1 from the field, 38, 39.3 from three. So they took care of business as three and a half point home dogs, and then they meet once more. So I like this. I like that they just faced each other. Uh, Portland took care of business. The first time Portland went and faced Loyola Marymount at Loyola Marymount, they got destroyed, 92 to 65. So do we trust Portland in this spot? Let's take a look at the line history here. The total is sitting at 143. It opened up at 143 and a half. The spread is sitting here with Portland as six and a half point dogs. Open up as five and a half point dogs. And then, so at one point, moved towards Loyola. And then, cash wise, 83% of the tickets are on Loyola Marymount, but just 72% of the cash. 54, and I should say just, but look, less, you know, some bigger bets have come in on the pilot, 17 and 28. Then 54% of the tickets and 76% of cash on the over. Take it away, Bobano. Last game on the board Lions, Pilots. Yeah, this is going to be interesting because uh, you've got uh, Loyola Marymount, uh, a team that uh, I think they're, they are better than Portland. If you look, Portland did beat them uh, just recently, 70 to 60. Uh, it was six days ago uh, against them. Loyola Marymount had, uh, it was, Loyola Marymount was honoring somebody, though, the home game before that against San Diego, and they destroyed San Diego 96 62. So I think Portland might have. Portland might have taken advantage of a bit of a flat spot there for Loy for Loyola Marymount. I don't want to totally take away that they had a nice 70 to 60 win in that game against Loyola. They have covered three straight down the stretch. So Portland is playing a little bit better, but I think there's a reason Loyola Marymount's not only favored uh, in this game, but favored by this kind of number, six and a half, seven. Uh, the question's going to be is, uh, you know, one of their uh, Kelly LaPepe, is his name. He's a really important player for Loyola Marymount. Is he going to play for them in this game? Uh, that His status is up, up in the air. Maybe because there's some movement coming on LMU that maybe that's an indication he is going to play uh, here in this one. But, you know, for this game, I would certainly, I would actually probably lean a little bit uh, here over the total. Uh, Portland's not exactly a team that's been good defensively, although they have cashed three straight hunters coming into this game. So I'm a little hesitant on that. Um, I, I think Loyola Marymount, especially if he does play Le Pepe, I think they definitely do win this game, a chance to cover as well. Let's not forget before that loss to Portland six days ago, Loyola Marymount had won the last three meetings against Portland by 20, by 19, and by 27. You know, complete and utter blowouts over Portland. And like I said, there's an element to this handicap where I think Portland might have benefited from Loyola Marymount a little flat emotionally after the, the win against San Diego at home. So... I, I lean loyal to Marymount, but it's one of those deals where at six and a half, I'm not comfortable laying the number, especially with one of their best players questionable for the game. Let's review all action here. By the way, Mel has jumped in and she says, same story as Wednesday. Backing the Avs says the building will be electric. I'm off of it. I just, the dominance they've shown the first day. I just, I can't, I just, I'm certainly not fading them. They look like juggernauts, but I'm off of that spot. I'm going to review Bobano's NHL action at the end of the show. Now, Bobano, our guy Chang Kim wants a top play from each so he can parlay 
uh, our action. And I think I know my plan. I'm going to review your action and think about the one play that you're going to give to our guy, Chang Kim. I'm going to put $100 on our best bets. And we have not been coming through for him. So let's deliver. Here we go. Uh, Bobano is in the throes of action right now with uh, Radford. He's got Radford uh, plus 11 and a half. And it is 53-44 with 11-18 left. Tight there. Uh, then Bobano's on the over 138 and a half in William & Mary in North Carolina. I'm on William & Mary first half, minus three and a half. A minus 110. And then the only spot where we're against each other is the Big South Championship quarterfinal. Bobano's on Winthrop plus one and a half. I'm on Longwood money line. So if Longwood wins by one, we both cash. Bobano's on Belmont money line. Uh, Belmont, uh, Northern Iowa, Belmont money line. He's on Hampton plus four. He's on Mercer minus three and a half in the over 137 and a half. He's on Charleston Southern plus 12 and a half at even money. Akron, Western Michigan, we stayed off as we did with VCU. Dayton, State off Evansville, Drake, and Ohio, Miami. Ball State is going to be a spot on my card. Ball State plus five will be on my card. Boban is on the over 148 and a half in Northern Illinois, Buffalo, Eastern Michigan, Central Michigan. We stay off, but he's on the over 146 and a half in VMI, East Tennessee State. He's on Western Illinois plus six. I want Gardner Webb, but maybe I should take it off with Mikey Money's assessment. I'm going to now have question marks beside it. I Do I have the conviction to go up against him? I don't know if I do. I'm very interested in Toledo for a smash and grab against Kent State. Um, very interested in that. And then Bobano's next action is on the over 154 and a half. Uh, I'm going to be on in Tulane, Wichita State. I'm going to be on Tulane minus three and a half. Taint play today is Tulane minus three and a half. Bobano's on San Diego State minus six and a half. He's on UT Martin plus eight and a half. And that concludes his card. So what would you say? Bobano is the spot you want to give to my guy Chang Kim. Oh boy, that's a that's a it's a good question because we well, got give, two let me give you consider. let me give you thirty more seconds. Uh, yeah. Perky with me on Longwood. Uh, here is my spot for you. Now again, it's a uh, because you are dealing with uh, a parlay. I'm going to give you a money line spot. Let me just make sure it's not too expensive, actually. You know what? That makes sense, too. And I'm going to go with – I've already got mine in mind now. Now that you said money line, let's make it a money line. You know, you still get a good price if you parlay a couple of money lines together. Let's go Detroit Red Wings NHL. Detroit Red Wings for Bobano. And I'm Tulane. Tulane money line. I like it. It's good. Detroit Red Wing money line, Tulane money line. Let's get this one for Chang. Um, Let's get this one. So uh, I like I like that. That's a good one. So there we go. Uh, friends and family, a uh, parlay. Bobano, excellent work. I know you went overtime. I'm sorry I keep keeping you so long, but 26 games in college basketball, four in NHL. You just got 30 games with the plum. Thank you for your hard work. Uh, thank you for your information, and thank you for leading us through these games and helping us decide how we're going to get paid here. Again, seven straight winning days for me in March, and let's make it eight. Thank you for your, all your hard work, Bobano. Uh, Bobano. What's going on with you here? Uh, I know we got ice guys going on. Don't forget, Bobano Bets is the new Twitter handle. Yes. Uh, any last words for the Capper supporting the show? Yeah, make sure you follow it at Bobano Bets. You can't. The old account shut down. It's, just, it's not. It's not even ex in existence anymore. So make sure you shut down uh, or you check out uh, and follow at Bobano Bets. Yeah, the ice guys Monday to Friday, two p.m. Eastern, Saturday and Sunday noon Eastern. We got Connor Mack in the rotation now on the ice guys on Sundays. Nice. So that's that's nice. That's nice to be doing shows with him again. It's been too long. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I do great. Uh, the great show with him with the uh, of course the uh, hitting the books during college football season. But shout out to everyone in the chat. Hit the like button. Cash your tickets tonight and all weekend long. Same to you, Jimmy. Best of luck, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, my man. There he is, Bo Bano. And I'm sure he's going to be happy to hear the Lion is confirmed. They're not going back. Nashushkin to... also uh, going to be in the lineup today as well. Oh, that's a good That's good vibes for the Avs. That's good vibes for the Avs. Nashushkin going to be back in as well. Mel says, I recommend adding some futures now. Uh, the problem, Mel, I've been thinking about it. I just I don't know I, I I can't stretch myself too thin because I'm already on two teams in the West, the Kings and the Oilers. Now they are in that one division. They certainly look. I, I'm thinking about it. I'm certainly thinking about it. All right, uh, it is time. 
to get into NBA. And I'm I'm champing to get involved in NBA here as I stayed on the sidelines yesterday and watched all the leans come through. Uh, so I'm champing to fire away. And we have just the man for the job. Your guest here on Friday for NBA got off to a very tough start here on the show. Now it's tricky. I mean, he's, he's been coming in without a set plan and it's not, it's the sample size is just messed up when you do it, but he got off to a very rough start. He has cashed five straight bets. He has swept the board in two straight appearances, two and O and three and O five and O over his last five bets here. And we need him to stay hot. Please welcome from South Jersey. Our guy and yours, Billy Brisbane. Billy, what's good, man? How are you? Doing good, man. I got the Missouri Valley Conference game up on the TV here. I uh, got to love afternoon basketball. You do. You do got to love it. Also, uh, just for my own information, did you cap the Joshua Naganu fight? Uh, the Francis Naganu and the yeah. uh, Joshua fight. To be honest with you, everyone's telling me Francis Naganu, this, that, and the third, but the PFL season starts up in April. Uh, granted, I don't know what the contract structure is in this contract, but he has a legit MMA fight against Bruno Ferreira probably sometime in the spring. So I stayed off the fight. I've, I'm going to a party tonight where the fight is on, on. So I'd like to find some action on it. We do have our video up at... Uh, Pub Sports Radio on our homepage. A shout out to Prex, Preston Ekdahl and Danny Betts. So they both break down the fight, and I will be watching it on the drive down. It's up, and uh, Adam. Brizzy, let's get to work. Let's get to work. Uh, let's review some action here from Cappers in the chat. Uh, by the way, in the, the pig milk play of the day is that Citadel Mercer over. Joe T also on that. And then the smooth balls play of the day was VCU Dayton under 137 and a half. Justin McKelvey stacks play of the day is the Cavaliers minus one. And that is also the max bet play of the day from our guy BJ. Uh, Viper MB is on Orlando money line. So that's what we are dealing with here from plays of the day in our chat. So let's get right to work here. And I'm excited to cap the card with you, Brizzy. Back-to-back -back board sweepage days, uh, five and zero in your last five bets here on the show. Make it three straight and make it six, at least six straight. So let's get to work. We start 7 p.m. Eastern. We have the New Orleans Pelicans. Yeah, please jump in, guys, uh, and let my know. Uh, let me know what your plan is for the fight, as I'd like to have something on it. Uh, Pelicans, Sixers, Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Pelicans 19 and 13 on the road, 37 and 25 overall. These Sixers 35 and 27, 19 and 14 at home, Wells Fargo Center. Pelicans are four and three post All Star break, 10th fastest pace in the league, 100.14 possessions a game, and shooting the ball nice, 48.1% from the field and 41.5% from three. You can't say these Sixers are shooting the ball nice. Uh, they are not. And they also will not have Maxi in the lineup still out with a concussion the only guy covington melton maxi and we know of course and beat out kyle lowry will be back uh to return to face the pelicans big scott i was looking at that i, I like it i'm gonna copy and paste all this stuff so please uh let me know i like it bo jackson says the pelicanos smash let's take a look at the line history here for this one uh and the cash flow and just set a quick table up for brizzy and we must stay hot, Brizzy. We must cash. I'm looking forward to attack the board because I stayed off yesterday, much to my chagrin. Here we go. The Pelicans, minus 7.5 and, and minus 109 at Pinnacle. They opened up at 9. That's a 1.5-point move towards the Sixers. Now, if you want it at plus 7.5, it's no VIG. It's minus 101. So it is juiced towards the Pelicans. But we have a point and a half move towards these Sixers who have been so bad without Maxi in the lineup. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm wrong about Maxi. Is that possible? Because I have him as out. Um, why don't you double check that? Does that have anything out of the total, or is this just people expecting? They, they, they can't be playing Maxi. You can't rule out a kid two games uh, for a concussion, and he came back the game that he supposedly had a concussion. So from a uh, front office standpoint, you got to sit him out for a little bit here. So he will be out again. This total is sitting at 22. 
222, exactly where it opened. It's been a one cent move to the under. It did get up to 220, 22 and a half, and it's right back to where it, it opened. Uh, Dan Kelly saying Maxi is out, confirming that Maxi is out. Then cash wise here. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong thing. Sorry, let's get the cash up here. Cash wise for this spot, we have. 58% of the tickets and 99% of the cash on the Pelicans. If you guys remember, the same situation happened with the Sixers last game. 98% of the cash was on the Sixers during the show, and I bet the Grizzlies, and they won outright. Now we have this 99% of the cash on the Pelicanos and the line moving away from them. Very interesting. Total-wise, you have... Let me get to all markets here. Sorry about that. Total wise, we have 62% of tickets on the under, no cash information. So here we go. Pelicans coming off their second straight win, third and four games, 139 98. The Raptors on Tuesday. Uh, Trey Murphy went off for 10 threes, uh, one off the franchise record that CJ McCollum holds. Jones went for 17. Zion went for 16, 9 and 8. They hit 24 shots from three, 24 of 49. Uh, shot 50.5 from the field. Can we expect them to continue this? Sixers coming off their second straight loss, 115-109 at home to the Grizzlies on Wednesday. We said that Lowry will be back in the lineup. Without him on Wednesday, Kelly Oubre led with 25. Paul Reed at 17-11. Campaign 16. Buddy Heald 15. And Tobias Harris. This guy is feast or <laughs> famine. He either steps up and puts up 30, or he tries to knock balls out of his mouth with eight. Eight points when they needed him so bad. And Reed fouled out. They needed him so bad, and he just did nothing. Take it away for us, Brizzy. Pelicano, Sixers. Yeah, the Sixers just continue to struggle without Embiid. Two and seven ATS their last nine. Nine and 19 straight up without Embiid. Uh, the injuries are just piling up. It's the offensive consistency is where the concern is. Uh, in hindsight of that Memphis game, I mean, they had a 16-point lead going into the fourth quarter. And Memphis just dominated points in the paint with uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. But the Pelicans are kind of a sleeper team in the West right now. They've been kind of rolling, like you said, three and one straight up ATS last four, uh, 17 and four on the road this season with a six and four ATS in our last 10 road games. But I actually like the under 221 and a half here in this game. Uh, the Pelicans have been really good defensively, only allowing 119 points per game per 100 possessions. Uh, and the Sixers are 114 points per game per 100 possessions. During the last five games, the Pelicans have only conceded an average of 105.8 points per game. Um, so I'm going with the under here. Under, uh, I think that numbers came down, 221.5 on FanDuel. You can get 222.5 on Bet three, uh, no, Bet MGM is 225.5. Uh, if you're on the Pelican side, I would kind of lean towards the first quarter. They've been really good early on in games, plus 10 net rating in the first quarter of the season. They've been eight and two in the last 10 games in the first quarter. And for the season, they're 37 and 25 ATS in the first quarter. And the Sixers have been bad in the first uh, 27 and 35 ATS in the first quarter. So if you like the Pelicans, I would probably take it uh, first quarter, not the first half coveted uh, line that we've been betting all year, but probably first quarter, but me personally, I'm going with the under here. The under, and did, were you able to find, sorry, did you say you found a 222 and a half? Because I can just find 222. Right. 222 and a half at BetMGM. Okay, you got it. Now, for me personally, let me just get Lock Brizzy in to the under 222 and a half. Philadelphia 3 and 5 post All-Star break. Uh, playing the 28th fastest pace in the league, not looking good. 222 and a half. And so I think that the Pelicans' incredible display, you know, now they've had – that was on Tuesday. So, they, you know, obviously they've been out. They've been I, – I just, I just don't feel like they're going to be as sharp. I also think this market moving towards the Sixers is telling. Now, saturated is absolute fire right now. Uh, saturated on the Pelicans money line. Wine time is a three team parlay on first half Pelicans for saturated. Uh, three team parlay with William and Mary money line, Pelicans money line, Thunder money line plus 130. Uh, I'm interested in a bounce back performance from it's not even as much of a bounce back performance from the Sixers. I, I just, after shooting the way they did against Toronto, having two nights, you know, completely off Wednesday, Thursday, I just don't see them coming out firing. Uh, Dan Kelly, though, saying that. Philly is playing their fifth game in eight days. There's my guy, Lamont Williams. I copied and pasted your max bet. Thank you for sharing that with us. 
Uh, respect, oldie, my man. Uh, Saturated saying no maxi, no bueno. I get it. Um, the market is telling us that they're welcoming the Pelicans money at the number that was opened at. And yeah, I can definitely see the Sixers covering this line. That's uh, I kind of like the under because I think this is going to be a low scoring type of game. And the easiest way to kind of cash a dog on a backdoor cover at home is uh, a low scoring game. Like I really don't see this game cracking 120 or 115. Huh. Okay, uh, you know, I I th- I could understand, you know, with with uh, the big O saying Pelicans best bet of the day. We just saw the Pelicans look spectacular and the Sixers look horrific. And then Dan Kelly saying, you know, fifth game in eight days for the Sixers. At least they'll have Kyle Lowry back. How much he'll help, you know? I, I maybe I should just stay off of this, but I certainly don't expect the Pelicans to put on the display that we just saw them. And Kong's clips like in that under gives us a final score of 105-92. Well, okay, so in theory yeah. though, you could probably get a better live line on the Sixers if you're leaning towards the Sixers plus seven and a half. If you want to monitor the game, I would say probably after the first quarter or first half, this line's probably go up to like 13 or 14 if the Pelicans cover the first quarter. I feel you, but it, that goes against my expectation. My expectation is the, the Pelicans will not shoot nearly as well as they did against Toronto and the Sixers will be better than they were against Memphis. So that just doesn't, that, that, that doesn't really work for me either. And if the Pelicans do take care of business in first quarter, I've, I, I do not think Philadelphia has the weapons to get back into a basketball game. You know, so uh, uh, basketball is a game of run sometimes. And uh, no I mean, Philly didn't look that bad. They had a 16 point lead going into the fourth quarter of their last game. And then, it just bottom out Scott Foster style. And Aquinas saying Sixers are 0 5 without Maxi this season, lost double digits to the Blazers and Warriors, but covered for Celtics and Nuggets. Uh, okay. So we have that point and a half move. Uh, right now, let's just leave it. I'm going to leave it be, but Smoking Tree on the first half over 108 and a half. Brizzy on the full game under 222 and a half. Kong's Clips giving us a final score of 105 92 Pelicans. We move on. And we move on to Lamont Williams Max bet Wizards money line and the liking the over 226 and a half. Charlotte Hornets at Washington Wizards, where Capital One Arena in Washington, DC. These Hornets 7 and 24 on the road. They're coming off their fifth straight loss. Also the first of a back-to-back. They face Brooklyn at home tomorrow. The Wizards 9 and 53, just 3 and 26 at home. Capital One Arena in Washington, DC. Now I had them against the Magic, and it was you know, one of those second halves that make you need to go, you know, for a walk. Very difficult. I'm still, uh, you know, feeling the anger that I had. It was ugly to watch. Wizards are terrible. But Charlotte is worse. Haven't reached the 100 point mark in five of the last seven games. They actually won one of those. Uh, you were talking about Vasily um, Majic, uh, the 30 year old rookie from Serbia. He's playing great. He picked defeated. up 21 on Tuesday. Yeah, he's a he's a real he's a quality basketball player. So Charlotte two and six since the All Star break. Those two wins came right off the hop. Uh, oh no, they didn't. I guess one they had one loss and two, they went two and one first three games. But twenty six fastest pace, ninety five point eight eight possessions a game. Both teams shooting poorly. Forty four point one from the field for Charlotte. Forty four point six for Washington. This all post All Star break. Thirty four point two for three from three from Charlotte, 35.4 from three, four Washington, Washington playing at the fastest pace in the league post all-star break and Charlotte, the fourth slowest here or fifth slowest, excuse me. So here we go. Uh, Charlotte. Uh, well, let's go to the back to the wizards set up Charlotte wizards coming off their 16th straight loss. 119, 109 at home versus magic on Wednesday. They led by 18 points led by 21 in the first half. Jordan pool, 26 Kuzma, 25. They were without Marvin Bagley, uh, who is dealing with back spasms. So I got to pull up whether he will be back for this one. Let's get into the spread. Washington sitting here at minus two and a half. Uh, they opened up at minus three. There's been a half point move. This did get down to two, but there's been a half point move towards the Charlotte Hornets. And then from a total side of things, this is sitting at 226 right now. Uh, it opened up at 227. It got down to 225 and a half so we've had just a tiny little bit of buyback and then cash wise for this one we have 69 percent of the tickets and 98 percent of the cash on the charlotte hornets someone made a big bet on the hornets 50 percent of the tickets and 51 percent cash on the over take it away brizzy 
Next game on the board, bum fight, Hornets Wizards. Yeah, uh, some of these bum fights been cashed on. Uh, there's always one theory in the battle of the tanks in the NBA, and uh, with both of these teams being in the bottom of the East, in theory, if you're the Hornets, you would want the Wizards to win this game to get closer in the lottery odds. Uh, with the records of these two teams, the the Wizards have just put the tank at tank. I mean, one and eleven ATS in their last twelve games, but. Uh, at, it's a weird spot. If you're the Hornets, you would want the Hornet, you would want the Wizards to win so you guys get closer in lottery odds because the Hornets have won some games. I mean, they have a better record than the Wizards right now. Um, there it's just defensively right now, the Wizards have just been really bad since the All-Star break. And uh the no active front court bodies, you know it's bad when Kyle Kuzma is the starting center out here tonight. But um you could go with the Wizards, or I would actually lean as the best bet in this game over 225 and a half. Uh, the Hornets, they rank dead last in adjusted net rating. Was Washington's 29th. Uh, they've been running smaller lineups. Uh, the Hornets just got back Nick Richards in the last game, so he might be on a minutes limit. Uh, this posted total just feels really low considering how bad defensively both teams have been. Uh, granted, Charlotte looked different in the first meeting earlier this year, but that total was posted as high as 241 and a half. That game went under 117, 114. So I would actually lean towards the over being the best bet in this game. Um, the pace of play between these two teams should probably pick it up. Um, battle of the tanks. Which team is going to get better lottery odds after this one is uh, really the question. I feel you. Uh... I, I thought I was going to be on the Wizards in this game, but I'm I'm not going to be. Uh, you want the over 225 and a half? I, I would say that would be the best bet. I'm not betting it. Though. Okay, I, I just can't put it. money in the Charlotte Hornets, Washington Wizards battle of the tank. And Smoking Tree says Wizards are winning this game. Easy bag for Smoking Tree. By the way, the none your business play of the day. Kyle Lowry, six or more assists at minus 130. None of your business. Play of the day. Let's roll on to the next spot. And this is BJ's best bet and the stacks play of the day. By the way, uh, Dan Clay says Charlotte in the midst of 13 of 17 games on the road. After that stretch, Charlotte will have eight, uh, eight straight at home. So we have BJ and Justin McKelvey both backing the Cavaliers here. And why wouldn't they? And why was there a move towards Minnesota? Let's see if they're if that's changed since then. Minnesota Timberwolves, 44-19, 21-11 on the road at the Cleveland Cavaliers, 40-22, and 21-11 at home at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland, Ohio. Minnesota 5-3 post-All-Star break, 97.36 possessions a game, 18th fastest in the league, 46 from the field, 35.5 from three. Cleveland 4-5, 96.22. Uh, possessions a game 24th in the league 46 percent from the field and 39 percent from uh three and uh probably for the week okay uh milzy uh milzy you want to jump on this on this show are you talking about jumping on here let let me know if that's what you uh are talking about because Milzy, not only um, Milzy, but uh, we got Milzy and Brizzy and Big Show in the UFC Locker Room Talk podcast. Great, great podcast out right now. Must listen to. So, uh, but let me know exactly what you meant by that, Milzy. But let's keep rocking here. Uh, Cleveland four, and you can hit me on Twitter uh, DM if, if you if that's what you were saying. Cleveland four and five, twenty fourth fastest pace in the league, ninety six point two two possessions a game. As I just said, 46 from the field, 39 from three. Minnesota on the second half, back to back after winning their second straight game, 113, 111 at Indiana last night. It was very impressive. We've seen it so often. The you know team missing their star player stepping up without them. This total is at 206, very low. Uh, opened up at Pinnacle at 207. We have a one point move to the under. Opened up at 209. Uh, opened up at 209 at Bet Online, but 207 at Pinnacle. From a spread perspective, uh, Cleveland now minus two. So uh, things have changed. Uh, this morning, I was shocked to see this move from one and a half to one. Now it's at two. That makes more sense. It's also juiced to two, so which means looks like we're going to get a three here very soon. Let's get to the cash flow for this spot. Darius Moore looking at the Timberwolves in the under 206. From a cash flow standpoint, 
43 percent of the tickets and 86 percent of cash is on the cavaliers which is something i expected then 62 percent tickets 69 percent cash on the under so the first game since cat tore his meniscus uh undergone surgery next week i don't know why it's next week but he's gonna expect it to miss the rest of the regular season uh edwards went for 44 uh, Gobert and that block in the game. Gobert went for 18 and 14. Cavs coming off their second loss in three games, 112-101 Atlanta on Wednesday. Jared Allen, 18 and 19. Impressive. Isaac Okoro went for 17. This is their third game in four nights, so they're not going to have Evan Mobley. He sprained his left ankle on Tuesday. They're not going to have Spider. He's going to miss his fifth straight game. They're not going to have Max Drews. He will be out for his third game in a row with the strained right knee. Take it away for us here. Brizzy, Cavaliers, Timberwolves. Yeah, Minnesota was able to get that win last night in dramatic fashion. In theory, I would be looking to fade Minnesota on the second half of a back-to-back, but the way Cleveland's been hit with this injury bug, they're definitely not the same team. They're going to be without Mitchell, Mobley, and Struess. In replacement, it's going to be Dean Wade, Georges Niang, and Isaac Okoro. And while the T-Wolves are going to be without Towns, Kyle Anderson and Nas Reed are perfect replacements in this lineup, especially in this spot. It's a Cleveland spot, though. If they were able to win uh, versus the Celtics on Tuesday in a favorable rest spot, I definitely think it's capable of happening again. But uh, despite this being a national TV game, there's a lot of conflicting factors for me in this one. Like, I think the Timberwolves are – aren't as hit by the injury bug. Carl Anthony Towns is a big name, but Nas Reed is a really good offensive player, and Kyle Anderson's a good all-around player, so it's not that big of a hit as Donovan Mitchell, Max Struess, and Mobley all being out. And then to put the cherry on top of the cap, uh, crew chief ref official tonight for this game is Scott Foster. <laughs> and uh, I'm one in three in the last four games. Scott Foster has refereed in games with just absolute craziness in the fourth quarter. So I'm not betting any Scott Foster ref games. This is on ESPN. God bless for the people that are back in Cleveland. I think it's a Cleveland spot, but I can't put my money there. I mean, I don't know how we don't back Cleveland here. Um, it's just after they Scott put all Foster games. But after putting all their energy, laying all of their fight out on the floor and winning that huge game, now they got to go do it again against an angry Cavalier team that completely fell apart in the fourth quarter. I, I, I agree. I think Cavaliers had to be. I just wanted a sign from the market to show me a sign that there's some uncomfort with the money that's coming in on Cavaliers. Now they're doing it, and that's enough for me to pull the trigger. Let's roll on. Next up for us, we had the Madison Square Garden, New York. Uh, we've heard from Stimmy OG, big on Orlando and the Bucks. Magic 37 and 26, 16 and 18 on the road at the New York Knicks, 36 and 26, 20 and 12 at home, Madison Square Garden. Orlando 7 and 1 over their eight games post All-Star break. These are the two slowest pace teams post All-Star break. A 94.94 possessions a game for Orlando, 93.14 for the Knicks. Uh, Orlando playing well, shooting 52% from the field post All Star break and 40.3 from three, while the Knicks are 42.5 from the field and 35.2 from three. From a line history standpoint, we have New York sitting at minus or plus one and a half. Uh, they opened up as at plus one, went to one and a half, got back to one, now back at one and a half. So we have a half point move towards the Orlando Magic. From a total side of things, this is sitting at 204 and a half. It is juiced to the over. This opened up at 207 and dropped down to 204 and a half. And then from a cash flow standpoint here, we have, oh, sorry, move over here. We have 73% of tickets on the magic and just 54% of cash 29% of tickets and 84% of cash on the under. So people moving on the over and yet uh, th this total is dropping. Interesting. So take it away. Oh, let me set this up properly here. Orlando comes in off their fifth straight win, 119-109 at Washington on Wednesday. Uh, you know, no Wendell Carter Jr., no Gary Harris. They didn't have Jonathan Isaac. Uh, it was second game of a back-to-back. -back. It was all maintenance. And Orlando dominated in the second half. Knicks coming off their third loss in four games, 116-100 at home versus the Hawks on Tuesday. Five and nine since February 1st. Uh, no OG, no Randall, no Mitchell Robinson. So then the question is, can Brunson come in and save them? Uh, Brunson, a game-time decision. So, Brizzy, let's start with Brunson. Do you expect Brunson to be in the lineup? Uh, it's... 
I, I don't know how to take on Tom Thibodeau because quote from his uh, press conference from yesterday um, when they asked about Jalen Brunson being available for this game tonight, quote, just got through most of practice on Thursday. I don't like what are we supposed to take from that? What do you mean? He just got most he got through most of the practice. Like, did he not get through the full practice? Did you guys limit him in the practice? It was a very like short cut, sweet answer. I don't want to answer this question type of thing, but I think he should be back in here tonight. This is a game that actually fit a system play for me here. I get it. The Magic have been one of the hottest teams in the East all season, 42 and 21 ATS, uh, NBA best ATS record right now. They've been in good form, winning 13 out of their last 16 games straight up. But I don't like the scheduling spot for Orlando tonight. Third road game in four days for the Magic. Uh, and uh, I think there's, there's slight value here on the Knicks as a slight home underdog. It's like, do you want to wait for the Jalen Brunson news? Because if you wait for the Jalen Brunson news, this probably goes to a pick em or a slight favorite for the Knicks. Uh, could you, Or do you want to bet the Knicks now? And then you get that 7 o'clock injury or the 6.30 injury news report and Jalen Brunson's out and you're looking at yourself like, what the fuck? Why did I bet the Knicks? And this line goes up to the Magic. But uh, the reason why this is a system play for me, the Knicks are 0-3 versus the Magic this season. It's just very rare that another team sweeps another NBA team four times in one season. And uh, the Knicks haven't played since Tuesday. They're 7-5 and ATS when coming off of two or more days of rest. And uh, they're 14, 10, and 1 ATS after a loss. And the Knicks have been in bad form. I think they're going to pick up the win tonight. Yeah, I mean, I can see why anybody watching these two teams of late would be on the Magic. And that's why it's extremely interesting that this line's not moving towards the Magic. It makes me think that Brunson is going to play and that the Knicks are live. It really does. Um, I mean, very rarely that, that, like, prove me if I'm wrong, even to, like, the worst tank teams in the league, another team sweeping another team 4-0 in a season is just very rare in the NBA. Wow. Okay, I guess the Knicks are live here and Brunson's playing. I'm going to need some time with this one here. If, if Brunson's announced in, what what happens to this line? Is it a two-point move? I would say the Knicks would probably be favored. I think the line would flip through zero, and the Knicks would be favored in minus, like, two. So it's like, how, how much do you really want to bear? Because I saw a lot of people that were saying the Knicks were live against Atlanta. Jalen Brunson got ruled out, and everybody slammed Atlanta. And they have granted the game ended up being closer in the end, but they still got paid with Atlanta. Uh but I like the Knicks here in this spot, man. The Knicks, the the Knicks spot is speaking to me. Is just uh, I gotta I gotta gauge out this Jalen Brunson news thing because I'm definitely not trying to bet the Knicks without Jalen Brunson on the court. But just off the system play alone, uh, the Knicks 0 three versus the Magic this season. I granted the Magic are having a good year, but um, it's just a system play that I always do in the NBA. Uh, it's it's just. Fourth, the fourth game games usually in the springtime, right around like March and April, that we start seeing these like sweepage spots for the year, and uh, that's what kind of led me towards the Knicks here on the money line. And everybody in the chat on the Magic, all we've heard is Magic, Magic, Magic. All right, uh, Knicks money line at this point. Are you waiting, Brizzy? I just gotta wait for this Jalen Brunson news. I gotta, uh, I gotta gauge that out. I gotta see what. Um, because Tom Thibodeau's answer to the press conference question was just dog shit. Like, he got through most of practice. And, like, at least he was there and playing, right? Like, I mean, if he got through the practice, I would imagine he's at shoot-around. If he's at shoot-around, he should be playing. But it's dead. The yeah. yeah, the line's telling us he's playing. So. All right, let's roll on. I'm very interested in the Knicks. 8 p.m. Eastern, Atlanta Hawks, 28 and 34, 12 and 18 on the road at the Memphis Grizzlies, 22 and 41, 7 and 24 at home. We're at FedEx Forum in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, Atlanta, 4 and 3 post All Star break, 16th fastest pace in the league, 97.5 possessions a game, 46.4 from the field, 34.1 from three. Memphis, 2 and 5 post All Star break, 27th fastest pace in the league, 95.86, 41.6 from the field, 31.8 from three. They've been shooting horribly but they have been shooting better when they got off of the all-star break they were shooting abysmally 
We have Memphis sitting at plus two and a half. This opened up with Memphis plus three, and it's now down to two and a half. From a total standpoint here with this one, we are sitting with a 215 and a half. It opened up at two. Let's go all the way back to 214 and a half. Got up to 216 and a half and it's dropped. Then from a cash standpoint here, we have Sorry, we have 48% of the tickets and 86% of the cash on the Atlanta Hawks. All these big bets on the Hawks, and yet this line is moving towards Memphis. 18% of tickets and 67% of cash on the under. Hawks coming off their second straight win, 112-101 at home versus Cavaliers on Wednesday. If you were watching our uh, All About the Hoops Wednesday live stream, you'll know Dan Kelly gave that out in the chat. He knew that the Cavs were in a very tough spot, and he backed tell everyone to bet the Hawks live, and they took over in the fourth quarter. For these Hawks now, this is their third game in four nights. Now they're the tired team. They've won four of their past six without Trey and also without Okongu, you know, as well. And he's out, you know, for at least two or three weeks at a minimum. And Jalen Johnson, uh, he will not be playing tonight either. Grizzlies come off their second straight win, 115-109 of the Sixers on Wednesday. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. has been an absolute monster. Uh, JJJ is is taking the game over. I want the Grizzlies here. I want the Grizzlies here. Take it away for us, Brizzy Hawks Grizz. Yeah, don't blame me. I mean, the way Triple J, they just said, fuck it. Run the point guard, play the center, play the forward position, do everything. I mean, Triple J is getting the ball bringing up the ball up the court if you guys haven't watched the Grizzlies game in a while. But uh, despite Atlanta's inconsistencies this season, um, I still kind of lean towards them beating Memphis here. I mean, Memphis has been playing better basketball of late, but it's the time of year where I'm trying to bet on teams that are playing for something, and Atlanta's clinging on to this 10th seed by a thread right now. Memphis, they've been bad at home compared to the road. They're 7-24 and 24 at home compared to 15-17 and 17 on the road. So it seems like Memphis is winning more – of these road games, but um, I'm just not trying to put my money on Atlanta right now. I mean, I feel like I would be testing my luck back Atlanta on their last two games. Uh, Atlanta win three games in a row and I'm betting all three. I, I don't want Atlanta. Atlanta's creeping up to like one of my most bet on teams this last month. And I kind of don't want that to be like a common trend theme. So uh, I would say Atlanta, but not the biggest conviction here. I'm staying off of this game. Yeah, I'm going to be on the Memphis Grizzlies. I mean, Bo Jackson said Grizzlies one and nine at home on Fridays this season. You know, I, I don't like that stat, but I mean, I'm I have an opportunity to sell the Hawks high and to sell the Hawks on the road. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the points though. Okay, yeah, let's roll. On next up for us, 8 p.m. Eastern, the Miami Heat 35 and 27, 18 and 14 on the road to the Oklahoma City Thunder 43 and 19, 24 and 6 at home. We're at Paycom Center in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Exciting news we're going to have Millsy joining us, and Brizzy and Mills are going to talk about a parlay that they have for UFC 299 tomorrow night. And of course, we have our big giant live stream going on with these two guys starring in it. So that's how we're going to close the show. And don't forget about the horse races as well. I just got off, uh, I don't have to pick up ella so i don't need to worry about anything so let's uh let's roll here we go let's talk about the spread for this one heat thunder uh, both teams shooting very well uh okay see now post all-star break second fastest pace in the league miami 25th at 96.2 on possessions a game 49 from the field for miami 41.6 from three 50.3 from the field 40.8 from three both shooting the ball very well of course miami on the second half of back-to-back which we will touch on from a spread perspective here okc minus eight and a half they opened up at eight and a half got up to nine they're back at eight and a half six cents of movement towards them then from a total side of things here we are sitting with a 224 and a half it's at a pick them open up at 224 a half point move to the over and then cash flow for this one we have 38 percent of the tickets and 71 percent of the cash on the thunder that surprises me that it's just 38 percent of the tickets you'd think a rested thunder squad uh you know would be the spot to back here uh the public not seeing it that way now the bigger bets are 42 percent of the tickets and 68 percent of cash on the under heat on the second half back to back after having their modest two-game winning streak snapped on 114 108 loss at dallas last night and patty mills patty mills signed on wednesday 
I'm not sure when he's making his debut. Heat remain without Tyler Hero, uh, Kevin Love, and Jay Rich. Uh, Josh Richardson uh, done for the season, right shoulder surgery. Uh, Don't say Hero. it like that, though, Jim. They they got everybody back from suspension, and uh, the way Terry Rozier and Nikolai Jovic been playing, I mean, fuck those guys. All right, okay. Invest in the fuck future. Em. Fuck them. Uh, should we talk about Gordon Hayward? God. 3.4 points a game, shooting 32.3% from the field in eight games. What a ass clown. Now, he looked a little better last game. 10 points, 3 of 3 shooting in 18 minutes. Uh, Jalen Williams has missed three straight games with a left knee sprain. He's expected to be back tonight for the Thunder. Take it away for us here, my man, and Bucks, uh, Bucks money line also for BJ. Coin saying liking OKC here. Don't like that. It's their first game home off of a four-game road trip. Take it away, Brizzy. Heat, Thunder. Yeah, uh, call me crazy. This number feels slightly inflated. Uh, despite the Heat being on the back end of a back-to-back, in the first meeting on January 10th, the Heat were without Butler, Rogier, and Martin for the game. They lost to the Thunder 128-120. to uh, 120. OKC covered a four-and-a-half line despite being the road team there in that spot. That was only an eight-point loss, and that was without damn near the whole entire three people that are going to be really controlling the usage for the Heat tonight. Uh, Miami's healthy in this matchup i think they match up very well with okc they can slow the game down and force okc to play in the half court uh miami's 14th in offensive turnover rate which is really good considering okc ranks number one in the nba for turnover rate so they get out in the fast break pretty often off a of live ball turnovers uh they've been uh trending in good form though miami when seven out of their last 10 uh defensively they've been on point they've only allowed 105.9 points per game during that time span if they can repeat their defensive tendency since the all-star break i think that's too many points okay see they're on a seven game home winning streak 24 and six straight up at home eight and two in their last 10 games with an average of 123.3 points per game but uh, could this be an okc blowout maybe but that's what it's being priced at, but I don't think so, man. I think Miami has enough juice here to cover this eight-point line. Hmm. I'm very curious to see what the market does. Are you making this official, this spot on the heat? Like the, I would like to hold off just the slightest a bit because I just want to see how uh, this number is going up to nine at points bet that I'm looking at, but I'm also seeing eight, so... I'm seeing like conflicted market trends, uh, but I kind of like Miami here in this spot. If you're a teaser person, uh, I don't ever tease the NBA, but if you're a teaser person, I'd definitely throw Miami in a teaser. I'm interested in the Thunder in this spot. I, I mean, it's a big line, and the uh, okay, I'm interested in the Thunder with the smash and grab, but the Heat would have to let go. Okay, we'll talk about uh, – I'll sit with that after the show. We have two games left in NBA before we talk UFC 299. Let's move on to the one that BJ just talked to us about. He is moving on the Milwaukee Bucks, and uh, I like it too. The problem is we faded the Lakers a second ago against the Kings and cashed that very easily. Cashed that very easily. So here we go. Crypto.com Arena in Los Angeles, California. These Lakers 34 and 30 overall, 22 and 11 at home. Bucks 41 and 22, 16 and 15 on the road. Milwaukee 6 and 1 had their post All Star break, six game winning streak snapped. They are uh, coming off that uh, ugly, ugly loss to the Warriors. Uh, they're playing at the 20th fastest pace in the league, 96.71 possessions game, 46.6% from the field, and 37.7% from three. Yanis is still a game time decision. Middleton out. Of course, LeBron and AD are game time decisions as per usual. Lakers are four and four post All Star break, hundred point one three possessions game. That's eleven the fast, fifty two from the field, and forty point two from three. Let's get into the line history for this one. Lakers sitting plus two and a half. The Lakers opened up plus one at Pinnacle. That was six forty five this morning, and there's been a point and a half move towards Milwaukee Bucks, which tells you that Yanis is in. Dan Kelly is also telling us that this is Lakers' sixth game in ten days. And from a total standpoint, we're sitting here with a 232 and a half. That's juice to the under. Opened up at 232, now 232 and a half. And Yanis is probable now, uh, says BJ. We also have an official parlay from our guy, Justin McKelvey, in the house. Uh, Grizzlies money line, Knicks money line, Bucks money line, Red Wings in regulation. 
Bucks had their six-game winning streak snapped in that 121-90 loss at Golden State on Wednesday. Yanis, uh, 23 points. He missed Monday's game over the Clippers. Uh, Dame and Bobby each had 20. And, of course, Middleton's now missed 12 straight. Lakers coming off their second loss in three games, 131-20 at home for Sacramento on Wednesday. LeBron led the Lakers with 31 points, but you know he left with four, four minutes left, soreness in his left ankle. Uh, they say that his availability for Friday is in doubt. Take it away for us here, Brizzy Bucks Lakers. Yeah, I'm going to the player prop market in this one right off the bat. Um, we've been fading point guards against the Lakers, and it's been fucking profitable. Uh, we're going right back to the well here. The Lakers just don't guard uh, high usage point guards this season and of recent. Um, talked about it in the chat. I was on De'Aaron Fox in the same exact line, 31 and a half points and assists, and he had a 44 point performance versus the Lakers. In the past five Lakers games, the four opposing guards have all gone over their points and assists line and their point prop line. Majority of their point prop line is really the reason why they're going over their points and assist line. Fox had 48 points and assists with 44 outright points. Jamal Murray had 35 points and assists. Jordan Poole had 41 points and assists. James Harden had 32 points and assists. Uh, the, the, Damian Lillard's dominated the Lakers in the past. He's gone over his point and assist prop line seven out of his last 10 games head to head versus the Lakers here. Um, when it comes to a side, this game should be. Shouldn't be at a pick in my theory, but this is the Lakers' old theory. When everybody bets against the Lakers, uh, when everybody bets against the Lakers, that's when you kind of want to back them. And then when everybody's riding the Lakers, that's when you kind of want to fade them. Giannis might be back. I mean, Giannis is back tonight, but he did not look like himself in that Golden State game. Um, maybe he's dealing with that Achilles injury a little bit too much, coming back a little bit too soon. Who knows? Uh, the Lakers let up that 19-point lead against Sacramento in their last one. But the Lakers have been playing better of recent at home. Uh, they're 10 and 5 straight up in their last 15 games. They rank second in offensive rating, only second to uh, the Boston Celtics during that stretch. And uh, they've been 23 and 11 straight up at home. So, uh, reductively, if you're going to back the Lakers, you kind of want to do it at home, and you're getting a dog price tag on the Lakers. So, um, I don't want to be going in here with a uh, maybe type of bet. I want to go with what I know. And what I know is the Lakers don't defend point guards. So uh, give me Damian Lillard over 24 and a half points at minus 120. Dame Lillard over, what is that, 24 and a half? 24 and a half at minus 120. Minus 120. I will look around and see if I can beat that. One of the interesting things about what happened with the market in that Kings game was Kings became very public. It was super at tip off, there was like 75 basically percent of tickets and cash on the Kings, and they handle business easily. LJ from H Town in the chat, uh, LeBron James over seven and a half assists, easy money, says LJ from H Town. I, I think the Bucks are the right side, and uh, I'm going to move on them. And I expect Giannis to step up in the bright lights of crypto. Let's roll on to the final game on the board here before we get into UFC 299, 10 p.m. Eastern. Houston Rockets 27 and 35, 6 and 24 on the road. The Portland Trailblazers 17 and 44, 9 and 21 at home. We're at Moda Center in Portland, Oregon. Houston 3 and 5 post All Star break, fourth fastest pace in the league, 102.69 possessions a game, shooting the ball poorly, 41.9 from the field, 33 from three. Portland 2 and 5. Since the All Star break, ninety six point six three possessions game. That's twenty second fastest in the league. Forty four point nine from the field, thirty three from three. Both teams shooting poorly. Let's get into the line history here. We have Portland sitting at plus six and minus one oh seven. That's they opened up plus six minus one oh nine. So we have a two percent move towards Houston at this price. And then from a total side of things, we are sitting here with a two eighteen and a half. That's juice to the under. And this opened up at 219, a half point move to the under, but it is juiced in that direction. And then cash flow for this final game on the board. Oh, geez, we didn't do the cash flow for the Bucks Lakers. That was my bad. 84% of the tickets and 97% of the cash on the Bucks. Hmm. Now it has moved to two and a half, but I hear what you're saying, uh, Brizzy. It is precarious to be on any side with 97% of cash. I've tried to stay away from all of those. Huh. I mean, the Lakers have been good at home. I mean, 23, if you're ever betting the Lakers, you kind of want to bet them at Crypto.com Arena. 23 and 11 straight up at home this year. Uh, second in offensive rating in like the last week and a half, two weeks. So the week before the All-Star break and the week after the All-Star break, second in offensive rating. Everybody's stroking the Celtics, telling them that they're going to go to the NBA Finals and sweep whoever they play. 
just love the Bucks after a loss. Um, but I mean, I guess you're dealing with the same thing with the Lake Show. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna have to spend more time on that. Obviously, it's a hard game. Wine time also saying it's Friday. Big money spots being cashing at an insane rate on Fridays. So Houston had their modest two game winning streak snapped on 122 116 loss at home to the Clippers on Wednesday. I did not deserve the cover. I had the Clippers minus six and a half, but of course I thought I was going to get it. Such bullshit. Um, Sangoon has been incredible over the last three games. As soon as I called him out, uh, he just started looking stronger and stronger 29.7 points per game over the last three 15 boards 6.3 assists Blazers coming off their second straight loss 128 120 at home versus okc on wednesday and they're on the first of a back-to-back they host the raptors tomorrow night they've lost 11 of their last 13 uh, deandre Ayton dealing with a sprained wrist and uh we know that he's uh, you know just a fucking heartless uh, he's missed the past four games they need him in there to defend sangoon uh scoot has been out for seven straight games. He could return tonight. Uh, if he doesn't, they expect him to be back again on Saturday. And then, uh, you know, Thibault really playing well, trying his hardest to keep this team in it. Uh, take it away. Oh, wow. Fanatical Jim says, Devil settled for Jake Allen. Way to go, Tom Fitzgerald, you asshole. Take it away. For, let's see what Dan's saying. Uh, says Houston should, uh, should change the nickname to the Goons. Take it away for us here. Rockets, Blazers, last game on the board. You made me laugh when you said about the cover thing. That's how I felt about that Saluki game last night. If anybody watched the Missouri Valley Conference uh, double OT game last night. But uh, the Rockets and Portland Trail Blazers, the Rockets are in the midst of a playoff race while the Blazers are in full tank mode. Head-to-head wise, Portland kind of has the advantage. They're 4-0 straight up in ATS in their last four games versus the Rockets. But I like Houston in this one. They should be able to take advantage of Portland's home recent form. Uh, Portland's on an eight-game losing streak on one of an ATS over the past eight games. Uh, the only reason why I didn't move on the Rockets here is just betting the Rockets on the road and laying – betting the Rockets on the road, A, B, laying chalk with the Rockets on the road is just a horrible proposition this year. Uh, the Rockets have won the worst road records in the NBA. Uh, I think last time I was on the show I was talking to you about how bad the Rockets are in three-point shooting – I think they're dead last on the road in three-point shooting in the NBA. So is this one of those type of games where the Rockets just measly out a game where they're down for the majority of the game? They come to the fourth quarter and kind of turn it up. The Rockets have been covering ATS-wise in the fourth quarter. So this seems like a type of game where uh, I lean the Rockets to win, but from a betting perspective, laying six points is just a uh, not a winnable proposition for the year if you're laying points with the Rockets on the road. Even betting the Rockets on the road, just in general. They just, uh, yeah, they don't show anything. But the question is, you know, who's going to deal with, I mean, we're going to have Duop on Sangoon. Uh, I mean, it's just, Sangoon's going to have a day again. I can understand nobody wanting the Rockets on the road, and I can understand this not being fun. It's not plus Alan. Wanting the Rockets on the road is about laying six points, Jim. Uh, in NBA basketball and in college basketball as well, if you're laying five and a half, six points, you would want that team to be up by double digits for majority of that game. And I just don't see the Rockets being up double digits for majority of this game. Well, let's review all action here on the NBA card. Again, Brizzy, if you want to add anything, just tag me. And I will retweet it, and it will count uh, uh, with your record. Nunya, Nunya business play today is Kyle Lowry, six or more assists. Brizzy's on the under 222.5 in Pelicans, Sixers. Scotty Rocks on the first half over 108.5. Then uh, Brizzy almost moved on the 225.5 on the over 225.5 in Charlotte, Washington, but you stayed off? Yeah, just uh, just not – out of all these games that we have on a Friday, why am I betting Charlotte Hornets and the Wizards? Regardless of the result of the game, I'm just going to be – if I lose that game, I would just be looking at my ticket like, what the fuck am I betting this game for? I'm interested in these Cavaliers. Very interested. Got the sign from the market. I'm also – I also have this feeling about the Knicks that Brunson's going to play and come back and save right the day. With I'm like 80% there with the Knicks. I just got to like, I might have to go on Twitter and start looking at some beat reporters about this Brunson news. He's got to be in. Uh, Grizzlies, I'm going to be on the Grizzlies. And I have interest in the Thunder at this huge number. I think it's there for a reason. 
Uh, I had interest in the Bucks, and I still do, but I'm not going to sit here with you know a ticket with 97% of the cash on it. I need to see the market reacting to it. Uh, we have Lillard for Brizzy, uh, Lillard a team or Lillard over 24 and a half points at minus 120. I meant to see if I could just get some of that juice off of that one. So let me just uh, take a second here. And get this Lillard. Uh, take a quick look at the Lillard player prop here. I bet you we can beat it here at Penny. They usually do a nice job. Dame Lillard over 20. Oh, exact same number you got. There you go. 24 and a half minus 120. And then we are off the Rockets and the Blazers. So before we get into horse race time, $50 American on the line for go- Forty minutes till the deadline, Jose. What's good? Uh, Eric Johnson to the Flyers from Buffalo, yeah. and yeah. the Bruins acquire Andrew Peak from the Blue Jackets in exchange for Jakub Zabrol. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, let's. Talk UFC 299. Excited about this. We have a huge, huge, huge fight card coming up. And we have two of the stars of UFC locker room talk. The other star, of course, is Big Show Picks. But we have two other members, Billy Brisbane and MMA Mills. Please welcome MMA Mills to the show. Millsy, how are you, my man? What's really good, man? Shout out to everybody, man, getting their money this early morning on this Friday, man. Yes, uh, we need to what get up, that man? cash here. I need William and Mary to take co- care of this first half for me. They're down 16, 15. All right, uh, Millsy, I hear that you guys have a parlay you want to break down. Take it away, my man. Floor is yours. UFC 299 tomorrow. Yeah, man. So this card that we got coming up is going to be one that if you don't even like fights and if you don't know any of the fighters, it's okay because you guys want to watch it. We got a, we got four different ways to get paid on this one parlay. We're coming off a good week last week. So we started off with the base. The base is we pick our most two profitable fighters who we think is going to dominate. With that being said, we we nominated Sugar Sean O'Malley. He's pretty much undefeated. Uh, you know, So we cut that minus 275 price tag and teamed him up with Matez Gamrot, who only has like two or three losses in the UFC, who I think is the top five lightweight in the world. We parlay those two. Minus 157. You take a minus 500 and a minus 3 to 1 favorite, get a minus 157 play. Good enough for us to bet it straight. Then what do we do? We call on the homies. We say, hey, two cent, what do you want to add on? Two cent says, hey, I'm going to add on Michelle Pajera. He adds on another leg. Now we go from minus 157 to a plus 176. Two parlays right there to get you paid. We hit up my boy Mills. Hey, Mills, man, what you going to do on this one? He said, take the future. <laughs> I'm taking Macy Barber, he said. So we doubled up with Macy Barber, but that wasn't good enough because I needed some real assistance. So I asked Billy, who do you got on this one? And who do you say? Macy Barber. Yeah, I do. I do like the future. I can give you a better analysis. I do not like the Kevin Holland pick, though. I'm against the All right, cool. Just shut up with that. All right, cool. So back to this. He said the Macy Barber pick, right? So cool. We got Macy Barber. Then I hit up my man Big Show behind the scenes and said, hey, man, who you want to add on to this parlay since me and me and Bill's already agreed on Macy Barber? He said, I'm going with Kevin Holland on this one to get plus 188, 181. You got four different ways to get paid on here. Uh, Yeah, everybody don't look the same. We all don't bet the same, but we all trying to get paid the same. So, hey, you could pick any one that you want. You could bet all four. Last week, we're coming off a smashing week. We smashed all four of those parlays out there. Uh, With that being said, yeah, Billy does have a play on Kevin uh, on MVP. So that's why he's not going with that Kevin Holland parlay, but. Hey, that's the that's the locker room pile parlay for you guys. Yeah, a couple of props that I'm looking at for USC 299 in that uh, main event. If you're trying to eliminate the juice, I actually think Sean O'Malley. I mean, how can you not? I got the fucking bobblehead right here, but uh, I like the Sean O'Malley matchup. But I actually think that Cheeto being a slow starter kind of opens up a nice little window for us. If you're on FanDuel, if you want to pay for a juicier tag, you can get minus 200 for Sean O'Malley to win and fight the start round two. Uh, sprinkle on those round props for Sean O'Malley. I think he gets it done in round three. And then um, the other fight that I was looking at here was Michael Venom Page versus Kevin Holland. 
Uh, throughout the years, dude, I had a good read on Kevin Holland. He's actually one of my favorite like personal fighters. But with that being said, he never fights to his optimal strategy. And I think that's going to cost him here against Michael Venom Page. I'm on Michael Venom Page at plus 108. And then one of the prelim fights that I'm looking at here is uh, Ian Kudialaba versus Felipe Lind. Uh, that one is going to be a fucking barn burner. Uh, the total is set at under one and a half. So basically under seven and a half minutes in the fight is juiced at minus 142. Um, I actually like Felipe Linz. Uh, he's been 3-0 and since he's gone to the 205 weight class. And uh, Ian Kudialaba is a ballooned up light heavyweight. Um, not originally a part of that weight class. I think Felipe Linz is going to smash and grab and we're going to cash and dog play uh, a lot of these pfl guys that end up going to the ufc um they end up having a nice little run over there in the ufc eventually and uh cashed last week on lolik rabinov from the pfl and i'm going back to the well this week with felipe lynn so a couple of dog plays and a couple of chalky plays for you let the guys know uh, go, uh let the cappers know in the chat where can we find the uh, ufc locker room talk podcast so it's the first week that we just brought it out to YouTube. Uh, we're on season three, episode six. Uh, we've been doing it all behind the scenes, you know, on uh, Apple Music, on Spotify, on iHeartRadio, on everywhere where the podcast just come out to where you could just listen to it. We just put it out on YouTube yesterday. Uh, we got it up to like 600 views. We're trying to get 1K by the day. Uh, nice. So, yeah, it's something that you guys could watch along. We have the cue cards up there with you guys to let you know exactly how the show is going with the program. Um, it's a whole different um, prediction show. It's not your typical run through every single pick and, you know, let's say what you think on this one. No, we got different topics that you guys don't talk about. We got 1-800-FRAUD alert. We have a section on there, a segment on there where we say, hey, who do we need to call the fraud alert on? And we call, we got a segment on there called plant your flag fighters to where we go in, you know, about our fighters who we're picking and, you know, we make a little graphic form and stuff like that. We have a section uh, called fights to finish and I go the distance. I mean, it, it's just a good time over there. So you guys can check it out on Pub Sports Radio YouTube. You can check it out on iHeart Music, on Spotify Music, everywhere where, uh, uh, downloads are available. That's where we're at. Jimmy, we hit 2,000 downloads in less than eight months. I know people that's been doing podcasts for two years who ain't got them numbers. So, I mean, I just love to see the growth that we're doing over here at Pub Sports Radio. Shout out to Big Show. Shout out to my man, Just My Two Cents. And, hey, yeah, we looked at having some more guests on, too. Uh, respect, man. Respect on our YouTube page. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger every week. UFC Locker Room Talk starring Big Show, Billy, MMA, Mills. I love it. Uh, and before we go live stream, what time does it pop off tomorrow? That's a good question. Billy, what time is the live stream? Because it's in Miami tomorrow. So I I, well, I hope it ain't early, man. I'm hope, usually the pay-per-views be regular, like uh, 7 no, p.m. No, no, it's, still, it's still regular, 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, East Coast time. All right, oh, yeah. dope. 6 p.m. right here on Pub Sports Radio. And if, if you 300 people want to get $100, only thing you got to do is enter in your picks in the UFC contest. If you don't even know who's fighting and who to pick, don't worry. Picks from Dave won his first time uh, entering the contest. <laughs> a lot of random but a lot of random people will win. You know, you just got to go out there and put your picks in, put your bets in. It's easy as that. 350 live people right here. Imagine if 50 of them signed up. Yeah, man, big up to the to the free UFC contest every week here on Pop Sports Radio. Hundred dollars to the winner of that one. Millsy, where can everybody find you here watching the show? Man, right here at Pub Sports Radio. You see the flag on the back, man. So I got a few interviews coming out this week. I got some few content that's out right now for you guys. Just locked up an interview with Jared Gooden last week. That's on the show. Uh, that's on the station. Besides that, I got Aaron Jeffries, a Bellator fighter who's fighting in two weeks. Uh, interview coming up with him. I got Danielle Kelly, uh, the BJJ specialist from One Championship. The, 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 the champion over there just gave me the official confirmation for that interview as well. Uh, so yeah, man. I'm trying to go and get everything going that we got going over here. So check me out at MMA Locker Room on Instagram, X, YouTube, and everything else. But, hey, check me out here on Saturdays with the boys, man. That's where we're going to be cashing checks. 
Respect, respect. Thank you for dropping by. There's MMA Mills and Billy Brisbane delivering the goods. Thank you guys both for joining us. Follow Brizzy on uh, X, getting underscore Bills underscore. And it is now time for the horse racing segment. 50 bucks up for grabs to Pub Sports Radio Gold members. Uh, we are breaking it up into three heats. Three heats. Jose, why don't you join me up here? So we have three heats of 20 each. Is that right? Uh, there's 62 members. So, yeah, two have 21. One has 20. Uh, it's exciting stuff here. And I'm sorry if the acoustics are not the best where I am. We're still working. I've ordered some exciting things. So I have an adult-looking studio coming, Jimmy. You'll be proud of me come baseball season. I like uh, but, yes, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's nice to see everyone in the chat. And a lot of breaking news today. A lot of breaking news today in the NHL. So. A lot of breaking news here. All right, Jose, you call the first 30 seconds. I will call the last 30 seconds. Now, Fernando Mendoza, now a gold member for two months. Shout out to Fernando Mendoza. Three heats. The top three move on to the finals. Take yep. it away, Jose. Let's start heat number one. The heat number one, I'll read off the heat members for this heat and we'll go through as before each race starts. And by the way, I might not be as loud as I usually am. I'd like to keep the neighbors uh, semi-happy, but the horse, the nay stays, obviously. But heat one, Subhuman Gaucho. We've got our guy Tori Coker, Cheshire Cat, Donut Silks, Jason Meyer, El Dorado Custodian, that is, by the way. Shout out to you, my guy. Nasty Nate. Ricky Bobby, Browns Hughes, Fanatical Jim, Joey Hard, Sharon Pullman, Dabby Cab, Ron Crawford, Kelly McGinnis, Iron Eagle, K Wolf, Joseph Thompson, Jimmy the Bag, Bo Jackson, Cody Norton, and Big T as well in the mix here. So race one, and we are off. <laughs> we are racing here. In San Antonio, it's a beautiful day as always, Jimmy. The sun's shining, and it's a beautiful time. El Dorado up in the lead first. Dabby Cab hanging in there as well. Nasty Nate right behind him. The Silks Donut taking the lead now. But, Jimmy, as you say, great pace is what matters here. Jimmy, bring your horse home. I'm right where I want to be. I'm right. I think I got a big run in me. Right now, we have Big T and Joe T up front. K Wolf trying to get in there, but Big T has the lead. I feel like I'm coming. I'm coming. Here comes the bag. 15 seconds left in the race, and here I come. Moving into second. Get me into the finals. Let's go. Oh, no. What the hell happened to no? Oh, God. Oh, God. No. Wow, look at Sharon. Look at her. Wow, what the hell happened to me? Jesus. Sharon, Polium, Big T, and K Wolf moving on to the oh final. Oh, God, Jimmy. I just fell off. I don't know what the hell. That was um, absolutely atrocious, uh, horrific. All right, Sharon. Big T and K Wolf move on to the final. I thought I was in a perfect spot there. Just fell apart. Uh, not pleased. Non plus. Not pleased and non plus. Res Mob cash that Radford under. I love it. Uh, Nanya said absolute collapse of both mental and physical fortitude. That was, so, yeah. The, the mental collapse was shocking to see there. But, yeah, you know, yeah. you have to run all of the uh, lengths of this track, Jimmy. You can't just. Run for two seconds and fall. It has to be the whole one minute. It was tremendously disappointing. Tremendously disappointing. All uh, right. Let's set up for number two. Race Jesus. two. Heat two. Here are your participants. Smoke and Mirrors. Billy Briz. Dutch Boy Fresh. The aforementioned Fernando Mendoza. Shout out to you, my guy. Res Mob. Fat Wally. Bunk Hoots. Crystal Craig. Mike M. Philly Eagle Flyer, myself, LJ from H-Town, Chosen One, Rude Boy, Jeff Slaughter, Juan Ruiz, Chris Boggan, BT, Nunya, Big Scott, and Julian Cesario in this race here. So this one 
this is going to be some exciting stuff here, Jimmy. I can't wait uh, for these horses to run. The horses are officially in the canals. Boy, oh boy, it's going to be fun. Jimmy, you starting this one? Yes, I will start this one. They're at the post. We are off and racing some early heat from LJ from H-Town. Nunya also in the business. Smoke and Mirrors on the inside. Res Mob also making a move. That Rube Boy coming up. Chris Boggan on the inside as well. Bunk Hoots trying to get involved. There's Mikey Money as well. Big Scott trying to get involved as well. But Smoke and Mirrors has the lead. Smoke and Mirrors with a slight lead here. We're about to hit the halfway mark. And Jose will take over. But Smoke and Mirrors, Res Mob, Mikey Money, and Dutch Boy Fresh starting to move forward Lee. they are starting to move forward the horses look like they're in slow motion but i assure you the horses are still running at peak condition dutch boy fresh battle and mike m battle and bunk hoots battle in here the pack is thinning out the pimp slap man and bunk hoots battle and that's philly eagle flyer on the outside we're going three wide here here comes fat wally again here comes fat wally going oh, son of a bitch run jose Luquette from nowhere Oh, this top Whoa. three. This Fat top three. Wally. Wow. Fat Wally, Philly Eagle, Fly. You got third. And the kid comes wow. in. Wow. The kid wow. comes Wally in. Wally out of a cannon. All right. That is heat number two. Hey, buddy. You want to close the door? Close the door and then we'll, we'll hang yes. out. Yes. Yes. We got, we got like a Carter in this. Uh, we got Big Carter here for the horse races. He wants to watch these horse races go down. All right. That's the horse races are right there. The third heat coming up here. The third heat and Carter here to cheer on the horses. You ready to rock, my man? Oh, he's ready to rock. You think, you think Carter's going to give us an eloquent call of this race? Uh, he uh, doesn't get too active in front of others. But if he does, I'll be very excited. I'll be very excited. But he's here for the horses, so let's go. We have the third heat coming here. And, yes, Bo Jackson saying Carter here to bless the action. Heat number three about to pop off. And we'll find the final three horses for our final run here. Jose, you call the first 30 seconds, and I will close up shop, my man. Let's go. All right. Heat three. If you didn't hear your name in those other races, here you are. Kenny Can Can, Preston Ekdahl, Kent Davies, Randall Sheffield, Vincent Ramirez, Coin, Nutflush Allen, Big Show Picks, Billy Friedrich, Devil Dog Ruth, Ricky Levine, Justin McElvey, or McKelvey if you're from other places, Craig Wilkinson, Ian Shaver, Gerald Jones, Sam Colmer, Juan Chavez, Connor Magpix, Director 97, and good old saturated round out the last race here. And we're off. <laughs> we're racing here in San Antonio again. What an even start for these horses, Jimmy. Look at these Pegasus all in a line here. We're racing here. 20 wide here. NASCAR, you think you're sick? He's got three wide? Nay, nay, my man. We've got 30 wide tracks here. We're ready to go. Coin in the lead right now. He's battling for the lead as everyone moves. Oh, so slowly in the lead here. Coin. Randall Sheffield's in the mix. Saturated. was complaining about his pole position. He's all the way at the back. Justin McKelvey in the mix. We're Oh, my goodness, Jimmy. What's going to happen here, Jimmy? 15 seconds. Take it home. Coin looking like he's trying to find the wire. Will he find that wire? Here comes Randall Sheffield and Ian Shaber making a huge move. A huge move from Ian Shaber trying to get to the line. And here comes Juan Chavez. Juan oh, Chavez. Saturated. He flies home on the outside. Wow. I have never saturated seen Saturated out of nowhere. Saturated Juan Chavez and Coin make our final heat. So we have nine... Going on to the final nine will wow. be fighting for. Look at saturated. I've look at never the late. seen a horse run as fast as what saturated did there. Wow, that was as fast as yeah. You're right. Late pace, late pace, uh, impressive here. So we have a nine horse final here for a hundred dollars american nine horse final american. for a hundred dollars american who is going oh sorry fifty dollars american my bad sorry 50 there's no uh carryover at this one 50 oh you want to say something 
No, okay. Almost, no. almost, almost had Carter talking there. Uh, $50 here up for grabs. Let's go over the final nine here. Let's take a look at that heat. Oh, very, boy. very it's, exciting. It's exciting stuff. I, I know Carter's getting really into it. I'm, I'm right. glad that he's fully locked into this action right now. Our elite nine right now here, Jimmy. Here they are in all their glory. We've got Sharon Polian, T, K. Wolf, Fat Wally, Philly Eagle Flyer, myself. Let's fucking go. Saturated Juan Chavez and Coin all in the mix here for the glory of winning this race. 50 Carter, bucks. Carter, Carter, do you have a prediction, Carter? Who's going to win? win? I think he said me, Jim. Oh, he said that person, Sharon Pulliam. Oh. Sharon Pulliam. Uh, we missed the M. There's an M on that. But that person yeah. says Sharon Pulliam is who my – my guy thinks will be the winner. Carter is called Sharon with the win. You called the end of the race because you are involved here, Jose. We have our final race. They're at the post. And there they go. We are off in racing here. And we have all nine horses in a line. Juan Chavez trying to make a move up front. Fat Wally moving forwardly. There's Sean Pulliam on the inside in business. Coin is slipping back, but we know he's got late pace. Jose Bouquet is in this, but Wally and Juan Chavez have moved up to the front. Saturated trying to get involved as well. K Wolf and T down on the inside. We have 33 seconds left in this race. And it is time for Jose Bouquet to take us home, baby. Oh, we want it. We got to want it. We might need a new jockey after this race because we're in the lead right now. And I don't love it. I don't love it. Coin just biding his time in the back. Philly Eagle Flyer in the mix here. 15 seconds left and my horse is falling. He's falling fast and he's falling off the screen. We'll never see him again, it seems like. T in the lead. T's in the lead here. here comes seconds Wally. Left. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's got to want it. He's got to want it. He's got to want it. He blows fast. Isn't that perfect? Saturated dropped a $99.99 .99 dono and is rewarded there. Jose in second. Oh, Jose can't win. Just can't get it God. Home. Just can't God. seem to get it home, man. God damn it. Oh, wow. my God. What a heartbreaker. <laughs> Jesus. I'm glad I don't live on the third floor. Because if I lived on the third floor, I'd be jumping off the balcony. He's like a fucking lawn dart. Oh, uh, my God. Yet again, Jose can't quite get the cash. So close, Jose, this time. It's, yeah, it's 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 a checkered history. But this just means I'm going to win the uh, poker tournament uh, in real life. Uh, for oh, of course losing. it does. Of course yeah. it does, yeah. Or or you'll almost win it. <laughs> that might be true. That might be true, but uh, it's going to be fun. Shout out to uh, Brooklyn Square uh, Card Parlor, uh, who, by the way, uh, Jeff shared some exciting news about that location uh, yesterday as well. And I think uh, a lot of people will be thrilled to see um, the wait staff there. I heard that. I heard that. Do you want to add to that, or you just want to get them excited? The wait staff is very hot, apparently. Okay. Well, that never hurts. Never. Yeah, hurt. it never hurts. So shout out to uh, Brooklyn Square. Shout out to Carter. And uh, shout out to Saturated. Fuck you, man. God damn it, I'm pissed. Saturated gets that cash. Yes, not flush out. Deuces never loses. Let's review all action here on our big show here at pub sports radio carter we're almost done my man so let's just close up shop first off thank you all everybody bo jackson nut flush allen nunya kelly mckinnis let's dance philly eagle flyer julian cesario von polo viper thank you guys old e joey harb nunya fernando mendoza uh, thank you, guys, man. Uh, truly, 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 thank you, guys. Uh, Joey Marinaccio, the Dapper Capper, uh, all of you guys, thank you for your support throughout the show. Uh, as always, we can't do it without you guys. Then the parlay that we gave out. Do you want to go or you want to hang with me for a bit? For a minute? The parlay that we gave out here was a Detroit Moneyline, Tulane Moneyline. That was a Bobano bag 
parlay Bobano with Detroit Red Wings, and I'm with Tulane Moneyline. Then action here from the show. Bobano on the over six and a half in Minnesota, Colorado. I'm on the under six and a half in Detroit, Arizona. Spreadsheet play the day is the Red Wings. Bobano's on the Red Wings. The Red Wings team total over three and a half. I'm on the under six and a half in Dallas, Anaheim. Bobano is on the draw plus 430. I'm going to be on the Jets here uh, very shortly. And then Bobano is on the over five and a half and the draw in Jets Kraken. Then in college basketball, Bobano got his card started with Radford. Uh, I'm on William and Mary first half, and it's coming down to the wire. I thought I was in business, but. Ugh, uh, it was 28-25 just a second ago, but 28-28 here. I got a minus three and a half. It really does not look good for me. Bobano over 138 and a half. Uh, Bobano on Winthrop plus one and a half. I'm up against Bobano in that one. I, has that game started? Why? Do, I thought it started at two, but I don't see it. Uh, just started six five Longwood. That's Bobano and I going up heads up against each other. Then Belmont for Bobano, Hampton plus four for Bobano. He's on Mercer minus three and a half. The over one thirty seven and a half. He's on Charleston Southern plus twelve and a half. Then he's also on Ball. St oh, I'm going to be on Ball State plus five. Bobano's on the over one forty eight and a half. Bobano's on oh one forty eight and a half in Northern Illinois Buffalo. One forty six and a half. He's on the over in VMI East Tennessee State. He's on Western Illinois. He's on them Leathernecks. I was going to be on Gardner Webb. I don't know if I still move on it uh, after Mikey Money's uh, declaration that Presbyterian's a better basketball team. Toledo interests me very much. I'm going to be on Tulane. Boban's on the over 154 and a half in the Wichita State Tulane game. And the taint play today is Tulane minus three and a half. Boban is on San Diego State minus six and a half. And he's on UT Martin Skyhawks plus eight and a half. Then in NBA, we just uh, talked about it before the horse race, so that's all uh, fresh in our memory. So that is our show for today. Carter, you want – oh, we took a two-point lead with a minute left. You want to say bye to everybody, Carter? You want to say bye-bye? Bye. -bye? bye. <laughs> <It's pretty laughs> nice. Uh, thank you guys so much for your support. Let's have a giant weekend. Yeah. Get that cash. I Carter and I rolling down to Niagara Falls. Oh, yeah, what's up? I have something for you. I have a, I have a bet for you, two bets for you, actually. Oh, oh my god, they just missed a three up two with 50 seconds left. Crash. Sorry, what's up, my man? What's your no action? No worries, no worries. Uh I parlayed uh paint and uh stacks. So I'm on both of those. Tulane and, and the Cleveland Cavaliers got good plus money on it. Shout to Ron Crawford, by the way, for dropping a spreadsheet. Um, second thing, by the way, uh breaking news, Matt Dumba to the bolts. Someone said that earlier as well. That will help. So there you go. Um, and then, uh, Father, we're on. we're on. Are you all right? I need a basket. I can tell. I can see it in your eyes. Three. We got a three. Now we need a little defense, boys. Come on, boys. Come on, tribe. Little defense here. Little defense here. Let's go. A little defense here. Come on. Step up and let's D up. Step up and D up, baby. Come on. The Aggies can't score on us. Aggies can't score on us. Come on, boys. Don't do it with my son in my arms. Don't let me lose with my son in my arms. Do not let me lose with my son in my arms. Throw that Hail Mary up and miss it. Foul from William and Mary. But they're not in the bonus. Is that two-shot foul? Not sure what the hell's happening now. Five seconds left. William and Mary. I guess NC is NC. Is that it's not. get the rebound? Get the rebound. Timeout. NC A and T. What the hell is going? On? Okay, <laughs> sorry, uh, Jose. It's not over yet. What What is your plan here? No. So I was doing the Tulane and, and Cavaliers. Got good plus money on that. And then uh, Saturday, uh, biggest soccer match of the year for uh, the English Premier League: Liverpool versus Manchester City at Liverpool. Last. I'll give you last five games for Liverpool versus Man City, Man City at Liverpool. one nothing Liverpool, one nothing Liverpool, one nothing Liverpool, 2-1 Liverpool, 2-1 Liverpool. Huge match. Atmosphere is going to be buzzing. Uh, I took Liverpool uh, to win, plus 200. Obviously, the draw I wouldn't hate either. Uh, but Liverpool to win, plus 200. I still have the futures, as everyone knows, as well. Uh, so, you know, this is like a, a pivotal, pivotal, like six-point match, especially if one of them wins. So will be fun. But, yes, I'm on Liverpool as well in that parlay. So take that for what you will. Well, go get that cash. 
a young Jose Bouquet. That's what we want from you. Is that Big Yon, buddy? Big Yon, you're not ready for the Joshua fight tonight? <laughs> are we are we cashing? I, I want to say we are. With my son in my arms. Get the cash, baby! We got it. Cardi, give me five, buddy. All right. We did it, everyone. We got Congratulations. That got that cash. And unfortunately, this sickness is inside of him, too. So Yes. And don't forget, Carter, waffles. Play of the day. <laughs> or want to know, Carter. Don't forget that. Oh, no. Why don't know? That shows everyone here. Don't waffle on your bets. Oh, no. If you waffle on your bets and win, <laughs> you'll be on button. That one top button will be on button. Even Carter likes it. Carter's he good. does like it. He likes it. That's a funny picture. You got a good picture. <laughs> that one. So, appreciate yeah, everyone for watching as always. We'll wrap it up here. Follow us on Twitter. Hit us up. We'll see you guys in the weekend. And don't forget, Pablo Palooza is going to be here before you know it. Oh, my. It's, I think Nasty Nate said like 12 more days. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Carter's going to leave, or sorry, Jimmy's going to leave his family there and join me, his real family. Can't <laughs> wait. Shout out to you guys. Leche, Elos Bookmaker.